Okay, guys, we are live. So for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I will be your friendly dungeon master today. Um, well, technically not your dungeon master. I'm going to be your friendly games master, because today we are uh, taking out of its sheath for its maiden battle. Wah! Grim and Perilous Studios, very cool. Zweihander, Grim and Perilous role-playing. Um, and with me today uh, to take uh, some or roll up some characters and uh, venture out into the grim and perilous world are the stars of our uh, Sunday sessions. I'll go the order I've got you guys on the screen here. Uh, why don't you tell us uh, who you are and uh, what you hope not to roll? Because <laughs> we're rolling random everything this time. Uh, first up is Sean. Hey everyone, my name's Sean. Uh, looking forward to uh, my first Vihander. It's been out there for me for a while. And um, so, pleased to uh, pleased to give it a shot. I'm intrigued by. Uh, I don't remember ever playing a game that uses the somewhat. Uh, it seems like a little bit popular percentile where the critical hit is a match below you know your success rating and the critical yep. failure is above it, which has always intrigued me. And I don't think I've ever played. I've actually played a game that had that rule. So, yeah, lo loving it. Looking forward to it. Excellent. And next up is James. Hi, I'm James, and I'm hoping not to be eaten today. <laughs> Keep those so fingers crossed. As long as I'm not eaten, I'm happy. <laughs> That's and last but not least is Arlen. Hi, I'm Arlen. Um, I think the only thing that really comes to mind is not a rat catcher because I don't like the the verminous creatures so much <laughs> in real life. <laughs> I need to use Skaven. I need to use Skaven in a game with you. Now you've done it, Arlen. <laughs> yep, you've yep. exposed Given that away thing. information for free. <laughs> That's terrific. All right. Uh, so anyway, the um, so let's talk about what uh, Zweihander is first to, to get us on you know started here. So Zweihander is a, uh, a D100 game that is very, very, very heavily inspired by Warhammer Fantasy role playing, Second Edition Warhammer Fantasy in general, not Third Edition because it doesn't have any funny dice. Uh, but um, I have run at the beginning of the year. We started a campaign playing Warhammer Fantasy Fourth. Uh, published by Cubicle 7, which is a really, really good game. Uh, and then I played in a session of Zweihander, and Zweihander has some substantial differences in it. Uh, they're not... There's a lot of commonalities between the systems where there's, you know, there's professions, there's uh, feats, you have you roll a D100 to, to do your dice results, but there's a lot of uh, changes that are made in the uh, finer details in, uh, in Zweihander. Uh, in particular, uh, damage doesn't use uh, hit points the way that um, Warhammer does. Uh, instead, it uses a like damage threshold the way that uh, Savage Worlds does. Um, it uh, it has different stats and it calculates skills in a different way. It's a much more streamlined version uh, of skills. You have a you know you just have certain uh, ranks in skills. Um, one thing that it does that uh, others do not is that each or that uh, Warhammer doesn't is that each profession has some neat um, special ability to it as well too. So each uh, each profession has some cool thing it gets to do. Um, as we go through, I might kind of you know point out places where it differs from uh, Warhammer, but um, it, one, I guess, other substantial way it differs is that it doesn't have a, a default setting. Uh, it uh, has a couple of settings that are kind of alluded to in the core rulebook, um, but you can use it for to play in the Warhammer world. You can use it to, you know, uh, if you make some uh, or ignore some parts of the, of the game, uh, you could play in, like, the Song of Ice and Fire. You could play in, you know, the Black Company. Um, the Witcher, um, those are some of the inspirations they list for it. Uh, for us, what we're going to do today is I'm going to use, I want to use everything in the core rulebook, um, and I think that there, there's a lot of se uh, similar sensibilities between this game and Shadow of the Demon Lord. Uh, not necessarily in terms of the rules mechanics, but in terms of the assumptions about the setting, which is to say that it is grim and it is perilous. So uh, that's what we're going to use, is this, um, uh, there's... A starting adventure in Tales of the Demon Lord that I've run before uh, that is a pretty good, you know, get the group together in a gritty kind of uh, setting and, and set them out on a purpose. So we're going to use that as the setting for this. But um, otherwise, we're going to roll randomly. Like we're going to we're going to treat this like the old school game that it uh, it emulates and uh, it strives to be, and uh, dive into full on character creation. Uh, so the first thing, guys, is. We need to figure out what uh, ancestry. Well, first off, we need to do is roll your your attributes. So stats in this game, uh, the primary stats are combat bonus. Let me open up one of the character sheets here. I'll open up uh, Jeff's character sheet because he's not able to join us just yet. 
Oh, you can close that, uh, I think you can close that big one, that big red yeah. thing at the top. Banner. Yeah, yeah you, can hide, you can hide that at the bottom. The bottom right? Yeah. So, your stats are uh, combat, brawn, agility, perception, intelligence, willpower, and fellowship. Uh, so, And some of those you'll, you'll recognize are carried over from uh, Warhammer. Uh, your fellowship is your charisma, effectively, like how well you interact with other people. Your willpower is how, you know, uh, what your force of will is. Your intelligence is your ability to learn and memorize. Perception is your perception. Um, agility is your speed and nimbleness, and it relates to um, avoiding hazards. But unlike other games, uh, it doesn't necessarily relate to range combat. Um, brawn is your physical prowess. Um, but like agility, it doesn't necessarily relate to your ability to fight. Your combat is your sort of all-purpose combat stuff. That's that's you fighting. Um, you will also have what's called a uh, bonus from each of those stats. Uh, combat bonus, brawn bonus. It uses shorthands of, uh, for each of those. So it's CB, BB, AB, PB, so, and so on. That just shows up a lot in the game. So um, I found it hard to i found I, I kept having to look back and see what each thing was but you know there's only seven attributes so it is uh it does become intuitive uh, fairly quickly um so first thing guys is we're going to roll up your stats so to roll your uh, attributes we are going to use the patented grim and perilous method here uh and we'll go top uh and roll our way down so and uh, because this was fun last time um, or when we were rolling up AD and D characters on the weekend uh, or on uh, Friday, I'm going to set the stat. Then each of you guys will roll, and each of you guys will fill in. So, what page are you on? Uh, I'm on page 29. What you're going to roll on your character sheet, you're going you're gonna to fill in now 3d10 plus 25, and that will be your combat score. So we all roll right now. Yes, okay, please. Cool. All right. And then we'll do the next one afterwards. Pretty good. Whoa! Uh, so, Sean, go. here's 3 to 10 plus 25. So that's actually 53. Yep. Fuck yeah. All right. Once that's in, guys, Brawn is next. Okay. Oh, excuse me. So 39, that's not, not uh, terrible. 39 as well, also not terrible. 44, pretty good. Okay. So we got some um, decently brawny characters. And next up will be Agility. Oof, look at that, Arlen, holy smokes. Mm -hmm. 53. Arlen's warming up. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you, there was an extra uh, uh, full stop in there. Ooh, there we go. 37, okay. It penalized you for your error, James. It <laughs> did. Oh, slap <laughs> yes. Next up is Perception. Oh, look at that. Look at the bright boy on uh, James, boy. Um, next up, Intelligence. And while everyone's... Oh, look at that. You guys are on the ball. Looks like I'm the, I'm the brainy one at 43. Yeah, really. Brainy and uh, quite skilled in combat as well. Okay, then it is Willpower. I should have mentioned as well too. If you just hit the up arrow key, it'll it'll key the same um, thing that you keyed in last time, and you can just hit enter again. Oh, okay. Nice. The, uh, the that uh, the dice roller, um, you know, the actual dice roller you can break out in the upper yeah. left also gives you the repeat. It'll repeat rolls for you. Yeah. And finally, your fellowship. Yeah, up arrow gives you lousy rolls. <laughs> <laughs> All right. OK, 
Okay, great. So we've got, um, everyone's got their stats down. That's pretty good. Um, it should automatically calculate your bonus as well, I think. Is that right, or am I, uh... No, it looks yeah. like it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Um, so I'm I'm thinking we play in a game where or a setting where there is more than just humans. I think we play in a kind of a dark, you know, um, a dark version of the sort of Tolkien-esque fantasy. Does that sound good to you guys? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I always. I mean, I get my uh, humanocentric thing. So, um, how common do we want to make non-humans? Because uh, this will dictate the role to determine whether you're human or not human. If we want to have a mostly human party. Uh, like, to be honest, I mean, with uh, three uh, right now, I mean, Jeff might be joining us later, but um, with uh, three players, what we could say is 33% of the party are uh, non-human, or we could say 33% of the party are human, and then just roll a d6 each. What do you Whatever. guys think? Would, would it make it any easier to make it more like Shadow of the Demon Lord since you're using that setting? Um, that one, there we're having to make some changes to the setting already. Elves are very different in Shadow of the Demon Lord than they are in this. Uh, gotcha. Orcs are, like, well, we will reskin the ogres to being um, uh, orcs in this instead, I think, to be kind of these uh, magically bred creatures that were, uh, or a species that was bred by crossing giants with men, essentially, like, you know, a millennia ago. Um, but what do you think, guys? What do you think? Do we want to have lots of non-humans? Do we want to have it equal? Do we want to have it rare? What, what do you think? I think we could just do, if you're saying 33%, we could, like, have each of us roll something and say the highest roll gets to be non-human if we want one in three. Yeah, what, what do you guys think? That's fine with me. Okay, sure. So yeah, everyone yeah. everyone, give us a, well, what kind of dice do we want to roll? D6? D10? Let's, let's just roll, uh, yeah, or no, let's roll 1D20 so there's less chance of duplicates. Yep, sounds good to me. But Everyone roll a d20. d20 gets to... One, five, and... Ten. Nice. Winner with a ten. Okay, so Sean, you're going to be a non-human. Everyone else is going to be human. So Sean, give us a percentile roll, please. Let's see what ancestry you are. Alright. I'm looking on page 31 right now. 53... Okay. You're a gnome! <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I'm really, I'm really my... happy to roll a one. But, uh... <laughs> All right. This, so... might, this might be my first gnome ever. Oh, that's great. Breaking yeah. new ground here. Okay, so uh, what I want, what you guys will notice is... Uh, I'm going to Jeff's sheet here. So on your character sheet, um, you have... Uh, a, a space underneath each of your uh, stats. There's a, a s place where it gives you your bonus, and there's another place underneath it that if you hover over it, it says Ancestry Bonus. Mm. Do you see that? So, yes. like, say under Combat, mm -hmm. there's Combat, there's the big circle, then there is a square that has your Combat Bonus in it, and then below that is an Ancestry Bonus. The way they do the bonuses in this is it's not... A, you don't change your stat, it changes the kind of... Um, uh, it's a bonus that's applied to, uh, to basically be a 10 up, 10 down kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So um, humans, uh, so that'll be uh, Arlen and James, you guys get plus one to your combat bonus, intellect bonus, and perception bonus. So combat, intelligence, and perception each gets a plus one. And then agility, fellowship, and willpower gets a minus one. I'm looking on page 32 for that. And now, it seems to have already... It already has numbers in there for me. Is right, that but that's the top one, not the bottom one. Like, let's see here. Sean. No, no, the bottom one does. And it could be because I typed in... I typed in Gnome, and I seem to have numbers in there. Oh, does it have a drop-down thing? You know, I just typed it in. Um, let's see if it went to the right place. So Gnomes get plus mm -hmm. one, uh, minus one combat, minus one brawn. Check, check. Plus one, uh, or minus one fellowship. Uh... Yep. I have minus one combat, minus one brawn, plus one agility. Plus one agility, yep. Plus one Zero intelligence. Percent. Yeah. Uh, plus one. Yeah, it looks like I filled it in automatically. That's pretty cool. So if you guys enter human as your ancestry, it may actually do that. No, it doesn't. And realize that it already says human in there by default, but you have to type it in. Oh, interesting. Okay, so maybe if you guys put that in, it'll automatically add that stuff in for you. Cool. All right, What's so then the circle to the left, uh, Kevin. Do you know that's to the left of that little box? Um, 
Oh, that is for whether it is a favored uh, attribute. That will be uh, determined. That's determined at a later part in your character creation. I think it's from your. Hold on here. If I just checked one and yep, it won't let it. me uncheck it. <laughs> oh, because you'll need to check only one. I see. Hold on here. Let's. Uh, there we go. I, you know, we'll keep going through uh, character creation because I I, I knew it came up at some point. I just don't remember offhand what that uh, what that meant. No worries. Uh, okay, so then, uh, next thing we got need to do, guys, is determine your ancestry traits. Uh, each of your uh, characters will have a an ancestral trait that you drew from your heritage. So, everyone, uh, give us a percentile check, and let's see what your ancestry does for you. Okay, so 92 for Arlen. Noble Savage for Arlen. Uh, James, you've got Fortune's Wheel... Uh, and Sean, you got uh, Gold Burgeon. So for your, uh, well, I'll do that in the reverse order here. So Gold Burgeon is uh, from devising mousetrap style children's games to chain reactive devices that oscillate endlessly in your workshop. You've created a number of deliberately over-engineered machines in your time. Uh, you apply this same creative genius towards many of the professional arts, albeit at the cost of being seen as a madman. Uh, so any skill rank that you gain in alchemy, counterfeit, skullduggery, and tradecraft modifies your base chance by plus 15 instead of plus 10. Hmm. That's pretty cool. cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, let's see here. And then the, the other one's Noble Savage. Uh, you get... You never suffer physical peril as a result of a failed toughness test. Whether through purposeful training or accident, humans have developed a natural resistance to the elements. Perils are kind of like the catch-all, you know, non-damaging uh, effects. So it's like, you know, if you're exhausted or if you've been stunned or whatever, it's uh, peril is what is the... That's how that's modeled in the game. And then yours, Fortune's Wheel, anytime you generate a critical failure after rolling a D100, automatically add one fortune point to the fortune pool. Fortune point are used to re-roll. Hmm. So, uh, for you there, James, um, some humans are favored by Lady Luck. I'm looking on page 33. Mm -hmm. um, humans are favored by Lady Luck. In a sense, they are her emissaries in an unkind and capricious world, either victims of its accidents or beneficiaries of its bonuses. Cool. All right. So, then... Next Does that go somewhere on the sheet? Do you guys see where... Um, uh, ancestry. I don't. I think there's a trait section that you can add on to. Let's see. Oh. Let's see if you scroll. Do, 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 do. Oh, uh, let's see. You might need to go to talents and trappings. Yeah, I put it under talents. Yeah. Okay. Oops, wrong thing. All right. Then, next thing we need to do, guys. Is that maybe what I'll do is to break up the numbers here. Is I'll type in there. So we're going to roll to see what archetype you come. This is the first step towards determining what um, what class, effectively, or what profession you guys are from. So everyone give us a percentile roll, please. And let's see where everyone's character is going. All right. 74, Sean, you are playing a socialite. Uh, James, you're playing a commoner, and Arlen, you're playing a knave. You're one step closer to a rat catcher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so good. You cursed it. Yeah, you called it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. So let's do this. So what the um, the archetype tells you guys is also what your starting trappings are. Uh, your, your, the starting point for what your character, what gear you have, is d d dictated by your archetype. So, like, uh, Arlen's is on page 47, James, yours is on page 46, and um, Sean, yours is on page 49. So, let's go in the mm -hmm. order I've got them here. Uh, James, would you kindly give us a percentile roll? Let's see what profession you're starting in. Seventy-three. You are <laughs> a laborer. <laughs> Fantastic. Arlen, would you kindly give us a percentile roll? Thirty-five. Oh, gambler. 
Mm. Interesting. Okay. And uh, Sean, would you kind of give us a percentile roll? 43. You are a fop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so great. All right. Uh, so, yeah, you can see on um, on the, uh, the, the pages for the archetypes that tells you what your different um, things are. Let me quickly record. So we have a laborer. We have a um, gambler. And we have a fop. So, um, we'll come back to your equipment in a moment, guys. Let's quickly record... Um, actually, hold on. Let's, let's go and do your profession stuff, and then we'll come back to the rest of the steps you need to do. All right, so um, when you create a starting character in Spyhander, you start with 1,000 XP. Um, and before you get too excited, we're going to start spending some of that pretty fucking fast. Um, every uh, different um, like uh, option, who's first up here? FOP is the first in here. So let's start with a FOP, just so we all understand how this, uh, this kind of works. What page is it? FOP is on page 106. Okay, so what the, you'll see in each of the professions is there is uh, a special ability that comes from your uh, from being in that profession. The first 100 points, uh, 100 XP, is spent uh, automatically buying that uh, that option. So uh, for the FOP, that one is fame and fortune. Even when chips are down, a FOP always seems to come out on top. Unlike others, they make their own luck. So the effect is, when making any skill test, you never suffer the ill effects of critical failures, instead treating it as a failed skill test. Hmm. That's pretty solid. That's pretty awesome, yeah. Yeah, it is. Then what you will see underneath there is there is a little uh, chart that has your advances. Each of those advances, uh, it counts as one like uh, one more little tick. On the character sheet, it uh, it's a little circle you can fill in, or it is a talent that you need to uh, take, look up and then add onto your talents tab. The talents start on page 208. And let me put that in chat. Page 208. So that's where they look. And then basically you still have nine more selections. Each of the selection costs 100 XP. So go ahead and go through, Sean, and um, go ahead and select nine more of those things. Fill in your fame and fortune uh, ability, and then go ahead and spend nine more selections between these. You can't uh, pick them multiple times um, unless there are different, like you can see you you could get two bonuses to your intelligence, you could get two bonuses to your uh, your perception, but you can't choose a, s a specific individual one more than once. And that's all from, uh, from advances? Fun. Yeah, from advances, exactly. <clears throat> okay, and then right across the page is the old gambler. So let's see what the gambler's got. Uh, gambler, um, you have luck of the draw. Uh, the gambler feels the ticking of the clock. Being friends with those in the underworld and of many different stripes does have its benefits. The cards tend to come up aces when needed most. So when you use fortune points, you do not need to roll percentile dice to make the skill test. Instead, you automatically criti critically succeed at the skill test you intended to make. That is exceptionally cool. badass, yeah. The drawback, though, is when the dealin's done. Living forever is boring, and the gambler will burn out uh, right before they fade away. And when you play the devil's game, you eventually get the devil's reward. When you use a fortune point for luck of the draw, you move one step down on the peril condition track negatively. Okay. <laughs> So that is uh, definitely comes at a cost. And then, again, you can pick nine more of those options there, Arlen. And then the laborer. What's a laborer got? Let's see. Laborer, here we go. Uh, your special ability is backbreaking labor. The laborer is uh, accustomed to hardship and demanding physical routine. They are the go-to when laborious tasks need to be performed, requiring not only strength, but tenacity and endurance. Uh, the effect is you do not suffer the ill effects of peril until you're at ignore three skill ranks on the peril condition track. Okay. That's pretty awesome too. Okay. And then again, um, James, I'm on page 116. 
Yep. That's where the labor is. You can pick another nine of those. So that's essentially all but one of them, right? Uh, for the the advances? No, because yeah. there's two rows. Oh. You can pick skill like one of the rows is skill ranks, the other row is bonus advances, and then also talents. Uh, and you find the rules for the talents on page two zero eight. Okay. So you guys can uh, start selecting through. And you said they all cost one hundred, Kevin. Each of them cost one hundred. Yeah, like effectively, what it means is you get to pick nine more. You have a, you have a thousand XP, and then you get to pick um, each of the ch selections for this tier. This game uses tiers in a similar way to like Iron Kingdoms, or you know, I mean D and D fourth to be honest, uh, or um, Savage Worlds, where uh, there's one tier, and then there's a second tier, like basic, intermediary, and I can't remember what the advanced maybe is the last one. But at, at the different tiers, it costs you a different amount for the uh, talent. So like at the intermediate, it costs you 200 per talent. But for now, it costs you 100. When you guys advance, you'll get XP, and then you'll blow XP, gaining more advancements. And you and we're, are we only going up by one? So in other words, um, if I wanted to increase rumor, I could only do that once. Yeah, uh, you can only do it once unless it gives you more than one option. Like if uh, you, yeah, like if it has the same thing listed twice, that means you can make two selections at that tier. Okay. Now the rules as written, you are also allowed to make free choices as well. Like there's, you can pick stuff that's outside your profession, but for the purpose of this, we're just going to stick with your what's in your profession. And Ash, I can't remember if you can pick outside of your profession as a starting character or not. And it's a 700-page rulebook, so I'm not going <laughs> to go flipping around trying to find that. And uh, in the stat, too, um, we can we can go... That's with the uh, FB, FB, IB, PB. Yeah, FB is fellowship bonus. Yeah, exactly. And all you do is you just... You see the uh, little circles next to your stat? Uh, yep. Yep, you mm -hmm. just tick that. Gotcha. While you're doing that, I'm going to look up favored. Uh, as well, too, so if I can find the rules for that. You know, very, like further to, uh, before we uh, went live, folks, we were talking about the, um, uh, what do you call it, the um, ability, like the way you start off with a competent character in uh, non-combat stuff in um, uh, AD&D. Uh, I, I found that to be the case here. Uh, my character that I played when I played uh, Zweihander felt a lot more competent at uh, first level or at like starting off. Uh, than what the characters in our um, uh, Warhammer uh, game did, and I'm not going to uh, you know keep comparing one to the other necessarily because that's uh, they're different, um, serving different masters, but it is a close comparator. Uh, so we're here we're stats, stats, stats. All right. Um, I will say as well, too, this is a really good-looking book. Uh, it is a... Especially the um, uh, the revised edition that they uh, printed through um, Andrews McNeil, I think, or McNeil, uh, mm -hmm. is pretty... Uh, it's pretty awesome. It's got this great, like, gold foil kind of uh, finish to some oh, of cool. the numbers. Yeah. It's really... Really holds up quite nicely. Really, it's, although it is really fucking heavy, uh, you know the this is about four times the weight of the print-on-demand version that I had before. Oh, yeah, it's it's really heavy, uh, but it's also quite sturdy. So, I guess it's uh, the cost one pays. You can't have it one way, but not. Okay, where where on earth? Mm -mm 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 -mm. I guess I could open up the PDF and go looking for it. How are the um, the choices looking, guys? Are there some good uh, uh, options for what you're picking between your talents and your stats and stuff like that? Yeah. Uh, interesting. Um, you guys will also all... I think you guys will all know each other at the start of this, too. And you also know... Um, you all have a mutual... Um, contact of a guy named Father Gregory. Uh, you live in a, a city called Crossings in the poorest district called Grievings. So we can, we don't need to uh, think of that just necessarily right now, but as we're going through and creating the characters, as they come together, we'll kind of keep that in mind. Question. If you've 
pick a talent, where do you stick it? Uh, on the, on the second tab? tab? Yep. Yep, and then you need to add the talent. It gives you an option about uh, maybe a third of the way down. Let's see, James. Uh, where is your character? Uh, adding so under weapon. talents and trappings, yeah, that's where you are. So talents hit down add. So there's a plus add under talents. There's modify and then plus add. Underneath yeah, armor and shield. Add to weapon. Oh, well, oh, right. Okay, I'm doing... Got you. Uh, okay. Cool. Got it? Okay. Okay. Cool. Excellent. Okay. No, that's not it. Um, and, and, and. So we got a gambler, we've got a fop, and we've got a laborer. And you all live in a shitty neighborhood. <laughs> see here. Um, 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 um. Anybody else picked a uh, talent? Mm, not yet. The mm. talents are pretty uh, fun. Uh, I, I would yeah. suggest, suggest well, at least one, uh, just because they it's it's part of what gives the characters flavor. Sorry, Arlen, I, I interrupted yeah, you. Yeah, I did a uh, holdout, which lets me conceal an item no larger than a knife on my person for free. Awesome. You, or rather, you, technically what it says is always succeed at the skill check to conceal it. But yes, you mm. get the idea. How did you get to select it? Because there's a text box, but it just, whatever I choose it, um, still can use both hands with equal finesse. Uh, if you, it, uh, you, you just have to over. type over that. Yeah. yeah. I got tricked by that too. It's still not, okay. Yeah. Did you get that? To... Well, it just really likes me being ambidextrous. Uh, which one is this here? Oh, let's see here. I can help out. Um... Oh, I uh, just start typing in there. Yeah. There you go. Boom. Huh. Okay. So you just... I, I just uh, I highlighted uh, everything or double-clicked in it, and then I started typing. The Roll20 sheet sometimes can be a little finicky as well. Let's try it. All right. Highlight everything. All right, all right. Let's see here. There's some interesting uh, skills, like eavesdrop. There's not too many games with eavesdrop in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely uh, informs kind of how it expects you to play, just by, yeah. uh, like Arlen, you had said before about um, One Ring, mm -hmm. right? The way that the choice of uh, description for the... Uh, uh, what do you call it? The skills, the skill names, informs how uh, you know how they're sort of expecting you to play. Excuse me, my goodness. Okay. Um. I'm still looking through, trying to find favored. Do any nice? Oh, Dave Aldridge. Dave, uh, do you happen to know what the favored? Uh, Dave's in chat right now. Do you happen to know what the favored attribute thing is? I'm trying to find it, and I can't find the reference in the uh, index at the back. And I'm just flipping through that. So, if you know Zweihander better, uh, any assistance you might be able to offer is greatly appreciated. I'll keep looking as uh, as we do this as well, though. 
Let's see if I can't find. I thought that I saw that um, as I was looking through this before, but I could be um, imagining things. Let's see here. Okay. So are the characters uh, starting to come together in your head too, guys? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kev, could you just put Nerves of Steel in as a second one? I can, yeah. Give me a sec here. Let's see here. Oh, you know, I bet you it's from Ancestry. Just from the placement of it. Let me take a look here. Uh, James. Oh, Jeff, you can join us whenever. Go ahead and hop on, bud. Uh, Nerves of Steel. Okay, what does Nerves of Steel do? Actually, oh, I can open yeah. it up. It's on page 208. Uh, where are we here? I could rest in dangerous places, unconcerned. Nice! <laughs> Someone wake up, Hudson. <laughs> right. Exactly. Nice. Uh, so I'll go back to skills and actually. Oh, shit. Hold on. No, I was typing. Sorry. <laughs> oh, let me go back. Uh, let me. Uh, I'll put. Uh... Oh, there we go. Cool. That's it. Don't know why I can't, but cool. And. Go. Oh, just hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I need to. Yeah, I don't know why it's not doing that for you. Let me finish. I'll, I'll have both these in for you. Just give me two. I'll let you know when I'm done. Yep. and see my others. Oh, I found favorite attributes. Yeah. Page 61, it's based on your upbringing. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Arlen. That would have driven me nuts. No problem. Okay. Uh, let me add in carousing as well. Hey, Jeff! Are you are you muted, Jeff? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, what's up, Jeff? Hey, yeah. hey, I made it. I'm alive. <laughs> no, I woke up this morning and I just totally forgot we were gaming, and I got the I got this Apple Watch and I've just been relying on it a lot more than I should, and it currently doesn't. I don't see that I have an email. So when you were emailing me, I didn't know until I looked at my phone at 12:30, and I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> I guess I was supposed to be on the computer an hour ago. <laughs> no trouble. Okay, oh. so I gotta open this character sheet. Yeah, and then I'll um, walk off. Uh... So you guys did a bunch of random rolling to. Yeah, yeah I know, yeah. you know, Jeff, we'll be able to do this with. Uh, the guys are making some selections right now. Okay. Uh, so I can just give you my full attention, help you walk through this in a sec. Oh, hold on, hold on, James. Oh, you... Oh, Not, I'll, I'll tell you when I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> like you said you would. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, I should have said something. Become intoxicated. All right, I think, hold on, let's see. Boom. There you go, now all yours. I relinquish control. Thank you. No problem. Okay, uh, Jeffrey, let's do this. All right, um, and... Doo -doo -doo -doo. First thing we're going to do, Jeff... Yeah. We're going to roll your attributes. So, uh, for each of them, uh, your attributes are the big circle uh, that you're looking at there. Let me just move you over here. So, like combat, brawn, agility. Correct, yeah. yeah. So, for okay. each of those, you're going to roll 3d10 plus 25. Okay, 3d10 plus 25. Okay, so how many are there? Uh, there are, uh, well, let's just do it one by one. So combat's going to be 39. Okay. Uh, and then brawn, 43. Pretty cool. Well, that's pretty high. Not yeah. bad. Um, and then next, agility, 40. Now, I don't want you to get too excited, but you're going to be joining a stalwart party of a laborer, a gambler, and a fop. 
Okay, perception 35, pretty cool. Alright, come on, let's be smart. In Tedahense. Uh, nope. <laughs> Not too okay. smart. Uh, willpower. Willpower. Pretty good. 43. Pretty good. And fellowship. 40. 40. Okay. Fellowship is your like um your uh, charisma, your social uh, kind right. of thing. So, um, everyone else, what we decided is that um, we would have a, like a limited amount of um, non-humans. So, Sean's playing a gnome, but everyone else is human. Uh, okay. So, what we're going to do is... Uh, let's see if this actually works. Hold on. It does. So, by entering your ancestry, it automatically adds the modifiers for us. So, that's great. Uh, fellowship, willpower, and agility. Awesome. Okay, so you don't need to do any modifiers. But what we do need to do... Jeff, is it, I'm looking on page 32 of the core rulebook. Would you give us a percentile roll? We're going to determine your ancestry trait. Okay. Or ancestral trait. Uh, uh, there we go. 58. 58. Manifest destiny. This is the one that I had. I love this one. Uh, humans are a quick study and carry with them a wealth of experiences. Unlike other ancestries, their people are extremely adaptable and can use a number of techniques with minimal level of understanding. When you make a skill check, uh, sorry, when you use a skill that you do not possess skill ranks in, add plus five base percent. Oh, cool. So yeah. you always have an extra 5% chance of succeeding. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to put that on... Um, the under the tab for talents and trappings yeah and then go down to your uh talents and go ahead and add that in there that's on page 33 yep so it's called manifest manifest destiny my crotchety old no uh nun that i played had that and i loved it you were about to say gnome i could hear i was gonna say gnome yeah yeah crotchety <laughs> old gnome i can tell is there anywhere that it puts any rules in or just the name of it uh, underneath oh underneath there yeah. we go can I see it? Yeah, and then we so, display it. The character sheet is really good. Like, like as far as good. roll 20 sheets go. Yeah, I'm impressed. Mm -hmm. I noticed that. Yeah, and I like the auto calculation of everything too. Good, it's good mm -hmm. automation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you told us uh, pick nine, right, Kevin? We had yes. nine to choose. That's right, yeah. yeah. Did you finish picking through those? So maybe what we'll do is we'll uh, get Jeff I caught did. up to everyone and then we'll jump back in and start going through these other options. How's everyone okay. looking so far? Did you guys make some pretty cool selections? Yeah, so I, I chose, uh, I improved fellowship of the attributes. I improved fellowship and perception. And then um, I chose skills, charm, guile, scrutinize, and eavesdrop uh, and simple ranged. Yep. And then talents, I took silver tongue and worldly. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so let's, um, Jeff, would you kindly give us a percentile roll? This is going to be what archetype you're, you're playing. Okay. 12, an academic. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so I'm looking on page 45. This is where the, it's the academic uh, archetype. What this tells you is what your starting trappings will be. Uh, and then would you give us another percentile roll? Let's see what actual profession you have. Okay, <clears throat> is this somewhere where I put academic, or not till I get a profession? Uh, you, uh, I'm not sure if there is a, a space for archetype on there, but okay, no, I don't see it. Okay, so go ahead and make a roll. Another percentile? Yes, yeah. please. Sixteen. An anchorite. Oh, you actually might have spells. Interesting. So, an anchorite is. I can't remember if that's one of the ones that starts with. Uh, be able to cast I magic. I can't type in the profession box for some reason. Oh, um, let's see here. That's weird. Uh, where are you? Oh, Jeff, Burger, social class, profession. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. So an anchorite is. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> You're a religious hermit. Okay. Okay. So I'm looking on page 83, Jeff. Now, for every character, every starting character starts off with a thousand X, uh, XP, and basically, for every selection that you make of your for building your character uh, from this profession, it costs you 100 XP. The first 100 goes towards your profession special ability, and your special ability is Sacred Mantra. 
Uttering the sacred Om, numer um, a numinous sound, you can tap into the divine vibrations of the ethereal veil. Deep within a spiritual trance, you are able to bend reality to restore vigor and mend your mind, healing both the spirit and physical body from within. Uh, you may enter a sacred trance for one hour. If you succeed at a resolve test at the end of the trance, you expel all intoxications and poisons from your system. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So that also goes under talents then? That does go under talents, yeah. Okay. And then, Jeff, what you can do, you see where your anchorite advances are listed there? Uh, below there, yeah. Yep. So each of those costs uh, one. You have nine selections. Uh, you can see that some of them double up. So like you can see that you can get a bonus advance to WB, bonus advance, to which is your willpower bonus. What you do is just basically uh, fill in the circle. You see on the, the main page... Oh, sorry, Jeff. I, I think you might have been filling something in there. Yeah, that's okay. No, I was, I was just following yeah. you. You so. see where it says advances? There's the circles next to your uh, yeah. stats. Right, like next to each thing. Yep, you yeah. just tick that. If that's what you choose. And then on page 208 is where the talents are. So you can see you've got three talents listed there. Clinch, Fighter, Determination, Impervious Mind. You can look up what those do starting on page 208. Okay. So pick nine of those. Oh, sorry. 208, not 209. All right. There's um, only 10 of them there, so I just don't pick one? No, 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 because there's two columns. One of them is skill ranks. One of them is bonus advances and talents. Oh, I see. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now, um, James and Arlen, how are you guys coming together? Uh, yeah. Um... I think I'm I'm all done with everything up to professional filling yeah. out all the the special having spent my 900 points on Excellent. all the bonuses. So what what did you what did you select? So I got bargain and folklore and gamble and simple melee and skullduggery and scrutinize as skills. Yeah. And I got a little bit more intelligence and perception and then I got the holdout talent which is the one that allows me to conceal a knife on my person. Pretty awesome. And James, what about you? What'd you get? I have... Uh, with me. Does that work? I have two talents, as you know. So I've got carousing, which means I can be a friendly or a uh, mean drunk. And you'll <laughs> see later, I'm always going to be a mean drunk. <laughs> We'll give it away I've got now. Nerves of steel. Yeah. Because I just don't care. I've added to simple melee because I'm a simple man. Yeah. Uh, two advances in brawn because I'm a beefy boy. Nice. Athletics drive because I normally drive a beer wagon round. And toughness. Excellent. And I've got resolve as well under willpower. Nice. So we know who the have, tank is. Yeah, yeah, so I've got the options of things like charm and things like that, but that ain't going to happen. <laughs> nice. Okay. My boy's a bit of a thug. Excellent. So the uh, some of the the, calc the secondary attributes like peril threshold, damage threshold, uh, and encumbrance and initiative and movement, I think the sheet auto-calculates that stuff for you guys. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's do this while we're uh, James or James while uh, Jeff is making his selections. Why don't you guys go ahead and each give me a percentile roll and let's figure out your season of birth. Okay. Huh. Hey. Nice. So, so Sean, uh, you're an autumn baby. Um, James, you are a summer, and oh nice, and Arlen, you're spring. So in. Um, there is something that we're going to roll now called your dooming. And what your dooming is, is basically it's, it doesn't have any mechanical effect, but it's a fun kind of role-playing thing that, that can add, you can add to the mix of, of how you're going to play your character. So why don't you each give me a percentile roll again, and let's take a look at your dooming. Okay, so Sean, as a autumn baby, your dooming is the stench of the grave follows you. Mm. Hmm. Uh, Arlen, you're a spring baby. 52. Do not accept trust lightly. And uh, James, um, your doom of summer, they will come as twins and leave as triplets. 
I have no earthly idea what that means, <laughs> but... <laughs> is there a place, has anyone found a place for these on the uh, sheet? I just put it under background. Okay. Yeah, Kevin, I have a question real quick. Of course. <clears throat> How do the advanced bonuses work? Like, what's the A, B, B, B? A, B, so what that is, is it's everything is a bonus. It's a stat with a bonus. A, B is agility bonus. FB is fellowship bonus. SB is strength bonus. Or a, a oh, BB is. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a bit of shorthand. It's funny because I, I had said just before that, you know, I found that kind of confusing at first uh, as well. Uh, it, it, with no reason. It's not really a hard, you know, it's not a difficult uh, shorthand to wrap your head around. There's only seven stats, but I routinely fucked it up when I was reading it. Um, okay. So next up, guys, let's read a roll for age group. Let's see how old everybody is. Okay, Arlen, uh, adult, uh, James, adult, and Sean, adult. So you guys are all adults. Okay. So you roll one distinguishing mark each. Let's do this here. Uh, why don't you each give us a percentile roll? Let's see what the distinguishing mark is. 83. Um, squinting eyes or false eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> it's for you, Harlan. <laughs> the gambler with an eye patch. I love it. Oh, God, Sean. Uh, yours is acne scarred face. All right. And uh, James, yours is weak chin. <laughs> Ooh. <nice. laughs> <I'm> <laughs> That's great. Oh, what page gosh. are the talents on? The talents on 208. 208. Uh, complexion. On everyone, give us a roll here. Okay, Sean, you are brown skinned. Um, okay. Arlen, uh, you are light brown skin. And James, you are dark brown skin. Cool. And then. We will roll your build. Uh, again, a percentile roll. Pretty much everything's a percentile roll, except for there are some specific uses for D6s in this game. Uh, so, percentile 45. Normal build for Sean. Uh, husky build for Arlen. And husky build for James as well, too. You're well-muscled, brimming with curves, or simply a bit overweight. Uh, you have to have them... Uh, for clothes, you have to have them specially made or let out by a professional tailor. So your price modifier for clothing is plus 10%. And then uh, we can do height and weight here. Um, so why don't you... Oh, here, let's do this. Again, a percentile roll from each of you guys. Let's see what... Sean, you're a gnome. You're four foot six, and you weigh. Uh, you were husky, right? Or you're normal? No. 110 pounds. Okay. Uh, Arlen, you are five foot eight and 188 pounds. And James, five foot two uh, and 159 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I love that the toughest guy is the tiny little fire plug, too. That's so good. <laughs> Pretty good. Nice. Okay. Um, next up is... Yeah, it really allows you to randomly generate everything in this. So go ahead and give us a percentile roll for hair color. 86... Um, salt and pepper hair for Sean. Uh, James. Uh, chestnut hair. And Arlen. Light brown. No, hold on. Sorry, guys. I fucked up. I was looking at uh, Dwarf for the two humans. Uh, let's see here. Uh, James, you are uh, ash blonde. Uh, and Arlen, you are light brown. So changing salt from pepper. light brown to light brown. Salt and pepper is correct for me, though. Salt and pepper is correct for you, yeah. Yeah. 
What we are suggesting too, Jeff, is uh, to, to uh, take at least one talent, just to I get a flavor to. for the things. You don't have to. Have rules is written, but just they're pretty fun. Eye color, guys. Forty. You're human. Uh, Hazel. Uh, for Arlen. Uh, uh, Sean, let's see here. Gray eyes. It's kind of cool. Salt and pepper hair and gray eyes. Uh, and an acne scarred face. Uh, right. And then, uh, let's see here. James, you get ice blue eyes. Okay, and then we have your upbringing. This is the nature nurture thing. So let's see here, guys. Uh, 92. You had a scholastic upbringing, Arlen. Mm. Uh, Sean, you had an industrious um, background. So, um, Arlen, your intelligence is your favorite attribute. Sean, your brawn is your favorite attribute. And James, you had a reverent upbringing. Your willpower is your uh, favorite attribute. I'm noticing that our dooming is at 10 years old. The prognosticator foretells how we're going to die. That's our dooming. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Bright, cheery uh, childhood. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so then uh, the next thing is your social class. Okay, 12. Uh, so Sean Lowborn. Um, Arlen Berger and uh, James Berger. So what that means is, uh, Sean, you're starting off with 3d10 plus 3 bl uh, brass pennies. So it's 3d10 plus 3. And then the other guys are starting with 2d10 plus 2 silver shillings. Okay, I'm done that now. Awesome. Okay. So let's see here. Then, um, you know, let's just pause here and then we'll go through. We'll get you caught up here, uh, Jeff, because it's just a matter of uh, rolling some, some stuff here. What'd you take, though? I, <clears throat> I took an advancement, <clears throat> excuse me, in combat, brawn, and agility. I took uh, simple melee, toughness, coordination, survival. And survival. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. And then I took the talents um, determined, determination, which is when you attempt an extended test to take your time, you gain an additional plus 10 base chance to your skill test. Cool. And I took clinch fighter, which um, means I'm extra good at wrestling. Oh, cool. Basically, if I use a chokehold on someone, then they have a penalty, and I also add an extra D10 in peril, physical peril. Awesome. Yeah, you're quite the scrapper then. I'm a dirty tricks wrestler. <laughs> All right. So then, let's see here. Um, well, first, uh, Jeff, let's roll your season of birth. This is going to be a, a bunch of uh, D100 rolls here. Okay. Is there spots on the sheet for all this stuff? Um, under the background, I think. Okay. Background. Comes a very full box. Right. Yeah, really. <laughs> oh, there, under background. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 47 is the first roll. 47 is first roll. You were a summer baby. Roll again. Summer baby. There you go. And 85. Uh, lightning sometimes does strike. Twice. This is the um, like uh, Sean said. This is what the prognosticator foretelling of your doom said. Lightning sometimes will strike twice. Uh, mm -hmm. Next up is your age group. Go ahead and again present Tom. Should just open the dice roller. Uh, what you can do is again hit uh, up, yeah, you up, can up just, arrow key. I know you can just press up arrow key. Yeah, sixty-eight. Uh, you're an adult. Uh, one distinguishing mark. Another percentile roll. Forty-six. Uh, you are inc 
incredibly beautiful. <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll again your complexion. Okay. 27. You have light skin, and you're incredibly beautiful. Uh, then let's roll your build type. Uh, percentile again. Three. Frail. <laughs> Born a weakling child, you likely suckled at the breast of your mother for many years, up to the point where it was considered unsavory. As a result, you are extraordinarily thin, even more so than traditionally slender people. Your little arms tremble when you have to carry your own things, and legs buckle at the thought of helping someone install their trappings into another's home. Fortunately, this also means you can squeeze into tight places, a great advantage should you be of a more roguish bent. <laughs> There's no, like, it's just a, a bit of, like, uh, role-playing stuff from that, but... Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I'm frail. I like it. Okay, and then give us a percentile roll. This will be your height and weight. Okay. 37. You are five foot five and 106 pounds. But really good looking. Five. And how much? 165 pounds? Uh, no, no, 106. 106. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, tiny. 106. Yeah. Uh, then give us another roll. This is your hair color. Okay. 74 is ginger. Mm. <laughs> it actually says that, ginger, not redhead. <laughs> I am a scrappy, beautiful redhead. Who yep. will and eye color, go ahead again. Fight with dirty tricks. 66. Uh, gray, blue. Gray, blue eyes and ginger hair. Interesting. Okay, now this will be your upbringing. Uh, another percentile roll. Was that 79? Yeah. Yeah, okay. 79. So 79 is reverent. So uh, you can t you see next to the ancestry bonus, there's a little circle that says, if you hover over it, it says uh, uh, favored attribute. Uh, click the one on willpower. Wait, what? Where on the sheet? So under willpower. See where the big circle is? Under willpower. Oh, like on the yep. attributes there, part? There's a little uh, circle you can toggle underneath that. Uh, that is yeah. the favored. Click that under willpower. That'll be your favorite. Oh, okay. What that means is that your advancements going forward will cost 50. Um, fortunes, oh, focuses. Focuses for that are cost 50 as opposed to 100. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. Uh, now your social class. Go ahead and roll again. 85. Burger. So you're going to start with 2d10 plus 2 silver shillings. So 2d10 plus 2. Yep. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay, so guys, there is... You know, we were talking... Uh, this is uh, Jeff and Arlen. We were talking Whoa. about the intelligence bonus in AD&D &D for, like, how it leaves a, a bank of um, uh, languages that you can learn. Uh, what it says is, after speaking to the GM about your native tongue, record your languages under background. You may learn additional languages over the course of the campaign as a unique advance up to a number equal to your uh, fellowship bonus. So you can learn that stuff over... Uh, your fellowship will dictate how many extra languages you can learn over the course of your character's life. Hmm, that's kind of cool. Okay. So cool. I think that... Um, we'll say that is there is a gnomish language. What's your intelligence, Sean? 43. 43. Why don't you give me a, a, a roll with intelligence uh, at plus 20. All right. Is in... Oh, I see. You can click right on the... Uh... Uh, well, if you click on, yeah, the stat, and then it should prompt a modifier. Ah. Let's see here. Nice. That is not good. <laughs> so, no. you, in spite of being raised a gnome, you never picked up the native tongue. You might be able to understand a little bit of it, but you uh, you only you guys all, you all speak the common tongue. Okay, so we're all caught up to the same place right now. Um, so now what we're going to do is you have the option of taking a uh, drawback. Uh, we roll randomly, and what this does is it gives you an additional fate point. And what a fate point is is basically a chance to not die. You spend fate points to not die. So if you want to have an extra cushion to um, to do that, you can make, give me a roll. You rolling will tell me that you're going to roll for a drawback, and we'll see what the drawback is. Uh, otherwise, you do not have to take that. It's a it's a D100? Yep, same thing. Percentile roll. <laughs> yeah, I know you would, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sean did too. Look at that. 
Okay, Sean, yours is branded. Uh... You, uh, you are one of the disenfranchised of society, the bonded, a serf, a slave, a thrall. You are looked upon poorly by most of society, treated with some manner of contempt or apprehension. Uh, explains why you're living in uh, grievings, um, right. if acknowledged at all. Most of those branded take great pains to hide the shame of their past. Perhaps you were even the bastard-born prodigy of an unknown father. It's up to you to decide why you were branded. But the effect is, whenever you interact with those who know you're branded and hold you in contempt due to it, you cannot succeed at fellowship-based skill tests to interact with them. That's going to be tough for a fop. Yeah. I picked a, I picked a tough... <laughs> well, I didn't pick, but I have a tough occupation. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, well, it could be among your... Um, you can decide where who that's among. You know, like, yeah, it could it, be... Maybe this is the region you don't know Gnomish because you were cast maybe, out. Yeah, branded as a gnome, not welcome in gnome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's a good call. Jeff, you got a 45. You are lily livered. <laughs> you get butterflies in your stomach in the most innocuous circumstances. It cannot be helped. And when forced into strange and otherworldly situations, your legs tremble and you have a hard time concentrating. The effect is, is whenever you fail to resist stress, fear, or terror, you temporarily reduce your initiative and movement by minus three to a minimum of one. And this lasts until you get a good night's rest. Okay, where do I add this? Um, I think maybe under traits as well, unless there's a place for drawbacks. Uh, the upside is both of you guys do get an extra um, fate uh, dice as well. Uh, James, 93, Veteran's Hand. Uh, whether it was lopped off at the hands of a vicious mercenary or somehow torn asunder in a complex cogs of a war machine, you lost use of your hand long ago. In its place is an iron prosthesis, clumsily, clumsy to attach and difficult to use. A webbing of leather straps adorns your arm from wrist to elbows. So you cannot hold weapons that are two-handed, and you must flip the results. And what flipping is, is a, a kind of a dice a trick they do here where you switch the, the tens and the ones digits. You must flip the results uh, to fail any skill test requiring the use of both hands. Wow. Ooh, that's a big problem. <laughs> it doesn't mean it's your dominant hand so it's not necessarily that it's just that you're going to have um, yeah <laughs> that'll be a challenge so it'll having seen awesome. what everyone else has gone through Arlen are you ready to line up for another fate point uh, well I already have a drawback from my profession so I think I'm going to stick with one <laughs> okay. what's, your, what's your professional one Arlen I, I my professional one is that every time I use my special ability which is that I can use a fate point to just critically succeed at a skill test. I move one further down the peril track. Uh, okay. Cool. So the upside to this, guys, is that uh, each of you who have rolled a drawback, you start with two fate points. Okay. Uh, Arlen, unfortunately, that was part and parcel being a gambler. Yep. Okay. It's the fate points. Where are they hiding? Um, right at the uh, top. Yeah, at the top. Uh, ah, yes. Yeah, sorry. See ya. And sorry... Okay, what was that? The, that was weapons. Uh, th so this called veteran's hand. Oh, right, you're having difficulty with the sheet. Give me a sec here. I can, yeah, I can plug right. it in for you. Give me a sec. Because this is one of the things you're not going to be typing new stuff in there uh, as we go along. Uh, when you level up, uh, you'll get stuff. Oh, what the fuck? Okay. Cannot hold. You know, and fitting in with you working as a um, a veteran and with how kind of intimidating you are, uh, it could be James that you're sort of like a foreman. A foreman? Yeah, you could be like if, if you after you lost your hand, you could be uh, because you're not able to pick up two, you know, with two hands things. You could be the guy who's like bossing everyone else around, and then like, you know, when uh, someone's getting, you know, some weakling is going to drop their their load, you could walk over and you know grab it with one hand and help them along. I'll go lash them. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, all right, so then that is a fate, and, and what uh, fate can be uh, used for, guys, is uh, can be sacrificed at any point during the game session to escape injury and death. Uh, they're akin to get out of jail for free uh, cards, allowing your character to rewrite the immediate past to change your future. All right, next is uh, alignment. Give me a sec here, guys. Everyone give me a percentile roll, please. All right, uh, so Sean, uh, 38. Uh, yours is, uh, your order alignment is enlightenment, and your uh, chaos alignment is detachment. So that's enlightenment and detachment. Jeff, you. yours is adaptation, is your order alignment, and mayhem is your chaos alignment. Uh, and actually, that is for, for you too, James. James, your order alignment is adaptation, and your chaos alignment is mayhem. Arlen, yours is Pride as your order alignment and Arrogance as your chaos alignment. So one of the things that um, the game tracks, it's uh, in a similar way to how, um, I can't remember what the mechanic is called, but the balance thing in uh, Force and Destiny, how like how you play your character throughout the session will dictate um, like the role that will move you up towards the light side or down towards the dark side. That's very much how order and chaos work in this. Uh, depending on how, like certain things you guys have done, it really is more of consequence for uh, spellcasters because uh, spellcasters will gain chaos points, uh, you know, or steps towards chaos um, as they cast spells. And then at the end of the session, we roll a d10. If you roll um, equal to or less than the chaos amounts, then you take a step towards chaos. Uh, if you roll equal to, if you roll more than that, then you take a step towards order. Once you fill your order thing up, you get a new fate point. Mm. So it's Wait, cool... you're trying to fill up your the one side or the other, uh, or well... you only want to fill up the good side. Well, you get a you get a, a benefit from filling up the order, uh, which is that you get a fate point because uh, yeah. you're you're you know ordering your life, I guess, and and taking control of your destiny. Um, if you get if you max out your chaos, you get a mutation. <laughs> so oh, you get a mutation. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what about, let's see here. What about disorders? Uh, disorders. Uh, you don't have any to start. Those are mutations. Okay. Oh, those are the mutations. Yeah, because it could be uh, physical or mental or psychological. All right, and uh, guys, um, I think apart from selecting your gear, so now we go back to your um, your archetypes, and you get all of the trappings that are there uh, listed under the specific archetype that you were. Uh, in addition, you get to pick one signature item from your profession, and we can talk about what that can be. I mean, that, that the, you know... Uh, it, it's not like um, there's a, a specific uh, like gold cow or like cost cap on it, but what it allows you to do is like if you're playing a coachman, it allows you to start with a coach instead of being like, boy, I can't wait to save up and get my wagon, you know. Um, so uh, think about what you think, you know, the gear or the trap. First off, the trappings. Uh, Jeff, yours is on page forty-five. Um, James, yours is on page 46. Arlen, you're on 47. And uh, who is the fop? Oh, Sean. Sean, you're on page 49. Yep. Okay. And then the equipment starts on page... Page 215. And it goes forward. So... If you got an idea, you need to look through and then try and pick your, um, you know, your gear. What I think we'll do in terms of the um, the rules for combat and stuff, I guess, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it and, and discuss it when we, you know, when we're going through. We're almost at our point where we'll take a, uh, a break anyway. Yeah, we're, we're a little at. So we'll finish adding in all the stuff and then we'll take a break and we'll come back and we'll start playing. See what horrible shit's going to happen to these guys. So you said we get one. Sorry, we get one item. We can choose. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk it over. Like, uh, fine. It is a signature item. It's supposed to reflect something related to your profession. Got it. 
something that you may not have money for, but that is kind of necessary to make your character play at the table uh, the way that, you know, um, you, you, you know, picture it, um, what do you call it? You picture that character playing, like, you know, a gambler without a set of cards would be, or a set of yep. dice or whatever, might not feel appropriate. Yep, yep. Uh, let's take a look at the trappings. I don't know. Oh, and there's some of the things that uh, I didn't bother to look up last time, but I want to quickly... Uh, like, when I played, I, I just threw them on my character sheet. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Uh, Being dumb again, where do you put your... Uh, items? Uh, they're under there... trappings. Uh, talons and trappings tab right in the middle, right next to where the talons are. Yeah, it makes a really long list. At least if you have a lot of things. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, and if you're having difficulty, uh, James, adding that stuff in, just put it in, put it all in chat, and then I'll cut and paste and drop it into there. Yeah, let me see if I can... Let's see if it works, but... Okay, let's see here. So some of these things, uh, like, well, not some of these things, all the things that are in here uh, listed on your character sheet too are not just, like, flavor things. When, when I played, I kind of just ignored the stuff. I didn't bother to look up the rules, but, like, things like bottles of leeches, they're specifically used in bloodletting and in psychosurgery, like, in specific um, uh, in-game uh, actions. So, like, bottle of leeches have a, a purpose. I'm trying to find where Black Lotus is because I can't remember what that does. But, like, if any of you have laudanum, laudanum is basically the, like, healing potion in this game. It's a thing that allows you to, to reduce your injured level uh, pretty uh, directly. I don't know if any of you guys actually start with laudanum, though. I start with mandrake root. Mandrake root uh, is used as a delirium, or to treat, is a delirium, and it's used to treat filth fever. Hmm. Um... Let's see what else here. Royal water is used to treat another kind of uh, um, disease, orcs molt. Uh, smelling salts is used to automatically reduce your um, your peril level. It's you kind of <sighs> you're trying to um, bring yourself or someone else around. So it's the healing potion equivalent, but for perils. Um, Soft shoes. <clears throat> since I, what, I'm going to change Kev, since uh, I ended up rolling frail and I think it's kind of interesting, I'm going to take my point off toughness and move it to resolve. Sure, yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, let's see if there's anything else I need to fill you guys in on. Oh, we need to give names and portraits for our characters as well. And the setting is, like I said, uh, I selected this uh, concept art from Dark Souls 3 because I think it fits more the sensibilities of this style of setting, right? It's a much more gritty and earthy. I know it's so unlike me to run a dark fantasy or horror fantasy, you know, but uh, I'm stretching. <laughs> Good job. I feel like I'm uh, growing. <laughs> And you know what I would do? I think... Why not? Mm -mm -mm -mm. I think next time I might get you guys to name your characters once we've got your ancestry rolled. Uh, because I that's, that's one thing that Traveler does that is so fun, is that knowing the name of your character as you meet him or her is so much more engaging, I think, in just a small way than, um, you know, rolling through and then slapping a name on at the end. Mm -hmm. I wish I had thought of that before. I also love that <clears throat> there is oh, a barrister profession. Nice. <laughs> Can't remember what they actually do. There's also a lot, like, it, it's a huge book, but if one of the kind of fun little rewards that you get by reading through it is there's these cute little, like, asides uh, of things, cute little, like, in-joke things. Like, you'll notice the um, the tomb robber or whatever looks an awful lot like Indiana Jones. Mm. Um, 
there's one called uh, I think there yeah the Dungeoneer. It looks like Gary Gygax. Uh. <laughs> it's it's the um, you know uh, blah, 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 blah. the world is built on the ruins of the old deep below modern streets lie aged sewers ancient catacombs and antediluvian caverns blah blah blah. Um, armed with little more than a torch, 50 foot of rope, and a 10 foot pole, and a few henchmen, a few rare, uh, a rare few make it back alive. Those who've lived to tell the tale are celebrated in fantastic stories, such as the famous Uncle Gygax and Arneson the Forgotten. Nice. Like, <laughs> and there's little things like that too. There, um, under the trappings, if you guys are in that section too. Uh, there's descriptions for the Zweihander and for the uh, the Warhammer. The Warhammer's description is the trademark weapon of your favorite Uncle Siggy. Uh, big, laborious, and terrifying, much like its wielders, this hammer was crafted for war, not driving nails. And then Zweihander is... Sometimes it's called a bastard sword, mostly because you'll be cursing whoever wields it. Other times it's called a great sword. However, uh, it is far more efficient and wieldy than its predecessor, the ubiquitous Warhammer. Mm. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> swipe yep so I mean it could be seen as uh, you know insufferable but I, I think it's cute and there's there's similar jokes throughout the whole uh, you know uh, the whole thing it's cool yeah alright um, I was really hoping that you would uh, roll investigator Jeff only because it's got one of my favorites uh, basically it's the special ability is very similar to um, uh, what's his name, Matt McConaughey's character from the first season, A True Detective. Mm. <laughs> you get better at your job the more fucked up you are on drugs or medicine or uh, booze. That's funny. Mm. Trappings is two fifteen, so we can spend our money, and we also get one signature item. Yes, one signature item. So, uh, what did you guys? Uh, uh, what has everyone uh, picked for their signature item so far? So I think surely the gambler needs a set of loaded dice, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, I'll definitely buy that. James, what are you thinking? What's your um, one-handed labor? Well, I, don't know if it's, I don't know if it suits, but a um, horse and cart for delivering beer. Yes. Yep. Does that fit? Yeah, absolutely. Totally, yeah. And it's going to be like a nag, like a, an old like labor horse. That just kind of like plods along, strong as you know, and, and tough as old shoe leather, but uh, you know, not really the thing you're going to be charging into battle with. <laughs> uh, Sean, how about you? You got an idea for your signature item? What do you think for a fop? What's your uh, what are some ideas? Um, well, yeah, I mean, a fop would probably have uh, some, f you know, uh, um, maybe you got like a closet full of uh, of outfits. You're living in shit conditions and whatnot, but you could have. A whole closet full of, of great outfits and stuff. Uh, yeah, I like it. Um, How about a... Do they have it? A sword stick? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know if they have it. If they don't have it in the core rulebook, I'm certain it's in um, Mine Gosh, which I've got here. What's a uh, sword stick? It looks like a walking stick, or oh. and but inside it there's a blade. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, trappings, trappings, trappings. Here we go. I might even go... He's kind of a lowbrow guy that wants to be highbrow. I might even go with a... Um, something more... Um, I'm trying to think of a, a sword stick, but more pedestrian. So maybe he, maybe it's some kind of item like a... Uh, a they have, is, is there like a... Like a is there some fountain pens in this game? fountain pen or uh, I don't know there no it's, it's still probably it's effectively like um, early renaissance era there's firearms um, there are um, there are like clockwork you know inventions and shit like that uh, but not quite to the point of uh, I think it's still quill and ink okay uh, it could be maybe. a lovely quill and ink set like with if you're thinking of like a, a crest well uh, I was actually I was thinking of something that could be a uh, an encased dagger rather than as much as a sword. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I'm not sure. I'd say I'm not sure what the, um, yeah. So there is in uh, mine. Gosh, there is a, uh, mine. Gosh is the first supplement for the game. Uh, it has, um, 
uh, sword stick uh, in here. And we could just use the stats for that. Sure. Uh, if that's what you, you're thinking. Yeah. So sword stick uh, called the aristocrat's weapon. The stick is a narrow blade hidden in the walking stick or cane. A favored of, and in your case, if you don't want it to be too big, it could just be a little like, it could be a little, you know, like a, a riding crops type thing. A little like, you know, ornamental piece of uh, accessory that you carry around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think that's maybe, maybe even something that looks like it's to ward off flies. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. And then you, you know, kind of one of those wisps. Yeah, love it. it okay. Swings out into a dagger. So then let me see here. Uh, Sean, let me go to your. I'm calling it a wisp dagger. Uh, so. Yeah, wisp dagger. So your skill is going to be um, simple weapon. Uh, okay. Distance. Well, Okay. Uh, is yeah, for, for melee, yeah. Uh, distance will be engaged. The qualities will be finesse, slow, vicious, and weak. That's finesse, slow, vicious, and weak. The qualities in this game uh, are the ways that they distinguish the different weapons from each other. Um, there is an alt. So there's there are rules for... Basically what you do is when you, um, uh, when you hit someone, uh, what you're doing is you're adding your, I uh, said, whatever the uh, combat bonus is to, uh, absent any other kind of modifier, uh, to a roll of a d6, uh, which is your fury dice. And then that dice, if you roll a six, it explodes and you um, roll again. And then you see how um, uh, like that, that carries on until you stop exploding. Um, there are, and then your modifiers can change things as well too. You compare that to the damage threshold of the target that you're injuring, and then that de that determines how uh, injured the thing is. So we've got. Uh, let's see here. Um, there is an optional rule. So at 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 default, that's the way the game works. Um, and then there's an optional rule where the they actually modify it, so the, the actual raw damage that each weapon does is slightly modified, and I think that that's how they intended it to be. I think they changed their mind. I keep saying they, it's Dan Fox, but I think he changed his mind because in um, uh, Mind Ghost, the alt damage is actually listed as the default in, um, the, in the game. So we'll use that, uh, that alt damage, and then if, to give a little extra uh, differentiation. So let me see here. How do we add that in here? Um, oh, handling, right. Your wisp dagger, handling is one-handed. Uh, the thrown dagger is one-handed as well. Um, can you... Well, actually, hold on. Uh, Sean, I'm just going to expand your wisp dagger down here. Oh, great. Okay, so guys, if you expand the weapons out, um, you can add... You select what weapon bonus you use. So you'll use CB for the wisp dagger... The damage is is just that's uh, as listed. Damage modifier, nothing. Let me see if this works. Submit. Nice. Okay. What's the damage for a wisp dagger? Uh, wisp dagger, uh, nothing. Uh, Where's the weapons? Oh, hold on. Wisp dagger. Actually, the damage will be your agility bonus, your AB, not your CB. Oh, here weapons. So let's see here. Is that better? Holy smokes. So that one is way better. I got a match on that one, though. I don't know if that that affected it. That's the crit. Yeah, that's definitely why. Yep. Oh, but you, so like that attack would have been a critical failure, uh, but you uh, the damage... I was just checking to see if the damage was rolling properly. Talent may have kicked in. I, I, I got that talent where critical failure effects are... Uh... Pretty awesome. Okay. Um, so, guys, the... Let's go through and, and fill in. Uh, weaponry can be found around page 222. Starts on 221 and goes over. We'll fill in that information here. Um, your initiative. Oh, it looks like we need to fill in your initiative. Do we? No, we don't. It's got it there. Okay. Pretty cool. All right. So the... I can see encumbrance... So that's clear. 
damage, but where do you get the damage bonus and damage? And so if you click, you see the arrows at the end of the description? If you click on those, boom, boom, it expands out. Yep, got then, that. Then you can fill in that information from the drop down. So like your threshing flail, you can click on that and that'll tell you what, uh, so a threshing flail, hold up here. That's a, is that martial or simple? Simple. Simple. Thr threshing flail is CB. Hold on, let me take a look at the, where are those optional rules in the core rulebook? It's under game mastery. Let's see. Okay, looking, looking, looking. Okay. Uh, the um, bestiary in this game, too, is huge. It's like a hundred and something pages. Um, and all I want to use are undead, horrible things against you guys. Mm. So I'm resisting that uh, inclination. Um, but... So we don't fill in a damage bonus, or we do? Like, uh, you do. Just give me a second. I'm trying to find where the um, uh, the optional rules are for it, because they, I, I think that um, it, like at, in the original draft of the rules, uh, that that was not included, um, where it, like you would just make your roll, and then it would be the the traits uh, for your or the uh, qualities from your weapon. That would be how you uh, differentiate them. But since then, they've they first added uh, the optional rules, and then in the first supplement, those are listed as the default on the uh, character sheet, which makes me think that maybe that's that's how they prefer. I asked uh, some like uh, Matt, uh, our buddy Matt at uh, Jowzem's Den and uh, the Grim and Perilous YouTube channel. I asked him which ones he uses, and he had only used the original rules at first, but he was saying that he thought he might use the the revised rules or the optional rules uh, in his next campaign. So. I figure, why not? It makes sense to me that certain weapons would just be rolling more damage. Um, but that could just be me carrying over uh, stuff from other games. And I don't mind you guys hitting harder. For what good it'll do you. <laughs> okay, what is here? Damage bonus, damage bonus. Hmm. <laughs> How are your uh, gear selections coming along, guys? Well, we're only um, we're copying down the stuff we get, and then just making one selection, right? Or you mean purchasing? We can purchase. You, stuff you can also whatever money you've got, you can also spend that on uh, on gear. Yep, yep. At the start, you're going to be working effectively, guys. You'll be working in your uh, professions uh, when we um, when we start things off. I'm so, pretty poor, so I don't have too many purchases to make. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you do have. I only have copper, Kev. I have copper. Okay, so <laughs> thanks for appreciate that. <laughs> Try not to spend that all in one place, eh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm a failed fop. Thanks, Kev. Thanks. <laughs> and what is it? What was your uh, drawback again? Um, uh, my drawback was branded. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm a failed fop among humans, and I'm disenfranchised among gnomes. <laughs> <laughs> Alternate weapon damage. Here we go. Okay, sorry, guys. So the, the threshing flail is combat bonus. So it'll be your CB uh, for damage okay. bonus. For the knuckle duster, it's BB. Okay. So your brawn bonus. Nice. The shiv is a CB, combat bonus. Arlen, do you have some weapons as well? Yeah, so I have a stiletto and a flintlock pistol. Stiletto is CB, combat bonus. And flintlock right. pistol is CB plus one. Hmm. And nothing else that we know of is given a damage bonus at this point, have we? Not, not at this point, no. And then what we'll do is I'll, we'll quickly go through the qualities just to talk about what they... And you don't need to remember them, just it, hopefully some of it will... It's going to throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. Okay, I have a staff. Staff does... I'm on page 372 in the DM section uh, oh, incident for okay. those listening at home. Sure. And this this is just... I can, I, can, I can look it up for you, uh, Jeff. Staff does BB, your brawn bonus. Okay. Hmm... 
And a dirk. A dirk does AB, your agility bonus. And what's the blackjack do? Blackjack does combat bonus, CB. Oh, okay. Like what it does, it's it's not a huge range of difference, but it'll you know like the the upper end you've got uh, Warhammer and Zweihander that do CB plus three, down to like, um, no nothing's at minus, so it's all, you know, just a, a flat amount there. Critical success! Holy smokes! And I'm wasting my good rolls on testing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can never convince uh, players, uh, even mathematicians, that you don't have a set amount of good rolls <laughs> for your day. <laughs> All right. Uh, I need a. Oh, you know what? I got the. Jeez. I'm like, I'm trying to find a bookmark, and there's a bookmark, a cloth bookmark, in the actual book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whoa. And then your armor, if you, any of you guys have armor, you make sure you add that to your uh, to your damage threshold as well. Oh, so Nefarious says he thinks that the uh, optional rules are still just optional. Okay. Yeah, okay, cool. So I'm mean, still going to try the, um, the uh, optional, these ones here. Because we got it already entered, and I kind of uh, that appeals to me. Mm, but thank you, Nefarious. All right. Okay, so we got uh, all that done. We've got everyone's uh, equipment selected. Is that right? Yep, I think so. Yeah, uh, and we have. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, just before we take our break, guys. Let's quickly talk about the. Qualities, weapon qualities. So, um, anyone have an adaptable weapon? Yes. Okay. Uh, so. Yep. So, yep. Adaptable. Whenever weapons of this quality are held in two hands instead of one, you add plus one damage. Mm. Okay. So this is the um, things. Anyone have a defensive weapon? Uh, yes. Defensive shields and weapons of this quality add plus ten base chance to parry. Parry is your defense in melee. Dodge is your defense at range. Absent any other things, you can't dodge in, in melee combat, uh, and you can't parry uh, missile weapons. There may be abilities that'll let you do that, but that's it. No one has an entangling weapon? No? Nope. What about fast? Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. Fast, yep. whenever a foe is struck by weapons of this quality, they suffer minus 10 to their dodge or parry. Mm -hmm. So it makes it harder to parry those quick weapons. Um, I don't think anyone's got a fiery weapon. I've got a slow weapon. Uh, okay, well, uh, how about finesse? Yes. Yep. Finesse, well, weapons of this quality always reference... A okay, they, you've already got this. A, B instead of C, B when dealing damage. Okay. Gunpowder, I think that's only Arlen, right? Mm-hmm. Weapons of this quality can be loaded and fired while standing in an engagement. Uh, further, these weapons cannot be dodged or parried. Uh, finally, they explode on a face of one or six. So when you roll the fury Whoa. dice, your damage dice, you're on a one or a six, it explodes. What about pummeling? Um, well, I'm just going to go through them in order. Sorry, uh, no one's got immolate. Uh, no one has ineffective. No. No one has light. Yep, light. Light weapons. Um, whenever weapons or shields of this quality are held in your offhand when attacking with a melee weapon in your primary hand, add plus one total damage. Okay. So it's a good offhand use of that. Uh, anyone have powerful? No. How about pummeling? Yep. Yep. Uh, the weapons of this quality always refer to uh, brawn bonus when inflicting damage instead of combat bonus. Uh, and pummeling weapons can only inflict moderate injuries, never serious or grievous injuries. Um, finally, pummeling weapons cannot be used to cause bleeding. So there is this game take, makes a difference between your injuries and your overall like uh, injury level so injuries are like the crit effects it's it's when you've got a, a, a specific hold on wait a minute is that right i may be confusing that i think it's uh hold on let me take a look at the combat section here 
Um. Oh yes, so wounded is basically like your overall death spiral thing. It's it's the penalty you get to your skill checks. Injuries are separate from that. Injuries are like the broken arm or the busted rib or whatever. Um, the pummeling weapons cannot cause mo serious or grievous injuries, only moderate injuries. Um, we'll see how that plays out in, in, in play, but that's just something to understand that you, it's not the thing that's going to be quite as... Getting whacked with a staff is not going to be as grievous as getting whacked with a Zweihander. Um, anyone have a punching weapon? Nope. Anyone have reach? Uh, what about repeating? No shrapnel? Slow? Didn't Sean, you say you had a slow weapon? Slow. Right, slow, sorry, yes. Yeah. Uh, whenever a foe is struck by a weapon with this quality, they get plus 10 to dodge or parry. Uh, <laughs> <interesting>. <laughs> um, anyone got throwing? I think they're... Oh, uh, yes, I yeah. think. Weapons of this quality do not have a medium or long distance increment for ranged weapons. So they just you can't throw it as far as you could, like, you know, a, a fire flintlock yeah. pistol or whatever. Um, anyone have vicious? Mm-hmm. Weapons of this quality grant you an additional 1d6 chaos die to determine whether you inflict an injury on an opponent. Chaos dice are basically, it's like fury dice, you roll them, only sixes matter. Uh, when you potentially inflict, inflict an injury, you roll a number of chaos dice. Depending on the nature of the injury, every six you roll tells you how bad that injury is going to be. So you're just more likely to cause a serious injury as opposed to just wounding them. Um, anyone have a volatile? That firearm's not volatile, is it? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, anyone have weak? I have weak. Yep. Weapons of this quality can only inflict moderate or serious injuries, never grievous injuries. Hmm. I've got no grievous at all. <laughs> Damn. I mean, you can still beat people into unconsciousness uh, as well, too, because the wounded level is separate from the injuries, but um, the wounded is, is sort of... If you think of, I, to be honest, I can kind of think of it like in um, Starfinder terms, it's your uh, your uh, stamina points versus your hit points. Your mm. injuries are take a lot longer to recover, and they require a lot more care and have a lot more persisting effect. Whereas the wounded, it does, you know, you could, you know, drink some laudanum and you bump up one level of wounded. You can get first aid and bump up one level of wounded. Whereas the injuries, that's something you have to deal with over a much longer time and you have to get proper treatment for. That would be the uh, grim and perilous side of the damage equation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is all the... I think that's all the qualities we needed to, to look at, guys. Is there anything else we need apart from names for these reprobates and portraits? I think that's... <clears throat> it. Does the book have uh, name suggestions? Um, I don't remember actually. Let's see here. Um, we can. Uh, let's see here. Ancestries. Because there's not a default setting, uh, I, I think there probably isn't. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I've got Xanthar's guide here. If you want to randomly roll. <laughs> A sure. gnome name. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Give me a sec here. Uh, percentile roll, please. All right. So gnome, uh, male or female? Male. Male, okay. Uh, you rolled an eight. Male name is... Oof, boy. Um, Arumawan. <laughs> if you want to bump up the ones immediately adjacent to that, there's Anverth or Bilbron. Let's go with. Uh... I mean, you could go with Arumawan as well too. It's a. I'll, I'll spell it out in uh, yeah. chat here. And Arumawan could be an easier way of saying that, and you could just be Ari. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's go with that. Okay, and then give us another roll for your clan name. All right. Although, if you're an, an exile, you may not have that. Right. Uh, um, Mig uh, Miglidi. Clan, it's my clan name? Yeah. 
okay. the people that hate me the most. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> um, for the humans, you guys want to do uh, randoms, or you want you got a name in mind? Uh, we've got some. Uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, Xanthar's has a bunch of um, like human culture. You can select from like Arabic, Celtic, Egyptian, German, Slavic. What do you guys think? I got a name, but I have the same problem uploading my image as I did yesterday. Okay, you didn't send it, if you send it to me, then I can uh, do that. What are you guys thinking? Do you, uh, Arlen, James, uh, Jeff, do you guys have names in mind, or you want to roll them random? Oh, it looks like we got some names. Albumin, okay. Um, and what I'll get you to do is maybe change your display names to have your na character name and then your bracket, and then we'll figure out what... Uh, let me get rid of this elf one that's in there. Okay. Jewel. Awesome. Okay, cool. <laughs> Nefarious says, Someone's running a gnome? They're hilariously wicked creatures in the setting. <laughs> That's great. Okay, great. Uh, no, uh, Nef uh, Nefarious has got some great suggestions as well, too, for... Um, GM screen is a must for weapon and monster trait lookup. Uh, lots of stuff on that list, but that's uh, that makes it most interesting. Cool. That's good to know. Thank you. Because uh, there is a... I did get the DM pack uh, back when it was only on um, drive through I would... Ne Nefarious, do you know there's not a print uh, screen for this yet, right? Uh, there's just the, the, the sort of DM pack they set as a uh, PDF. Um, all right. Uh, Jeff, if you uh, email me the the I picture. put it in the chat. Oh, well, I can't... L oh, yeah, I can do that. Hold on. Give me a sec. Let me... Oh, I, get... yeah, I, 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 can, I can access it. Yeah, I'll, like I'll access it on my laptop. Give me a sec here. I'll just be... You'll see me in a different uh, angle for a brief time here. Yeah. Yeah. How are you guys feeling about your uh... characters, though? <clears throat> Good. Yeah, I, I just... The... Go ahead, Jeff. No, go ahead. I was gonna say good. I, <clears throat> I'm, um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm. It's gonna probably. I'm, one, I'm wondering about how he's gonna react to some things, but I, I mean, I like the. Uh, he's very downtrodden, and I'm gonna have to <laughs> kind of have to figure out how to play this. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, which it's, is your character? What about her? No, which one is yours? I don't know the name. You don't have your name changed. Are you... Are you ever... Oh, Jewel. Jewel, okay. What? Oh, yeah, sorry, Jewel. Okay, hold up here. That's a great illustration, too. What? I did change my name. It didn't stick. What? Let's see here. Went in there and did all this already, and... Okay. Save. Your display name is changed as, uh, or your your. Oh yeah, no, you're you're up now, Jeff. Yeah, I know. I just already did it once. And it okay. Stay. There we go. Jewel. The only is... thing I don't have is I don't know what to take for a signature item for someone who is a religious hermit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a great. So this is. The... I don't even know what he does for a living. So. Yeah, this is what uh, Jeff picked for Jewel. She's a scrawny ginger. <laughs> nice. That's great. Ebert Ryder. Love it. Okay, and uh, Albumin, is that his name? Mm-hmm. Yikes. Okay. And I'm working on a picture right now. Okay, cool. So once we get those uh, the illustrations loaded, guys, we'll take our break. Um, we'll refresh our beverages, hit the head, and then we'll come back and maybe start playing. I'm wondering if there's a way... Uh... I don't know, Kev, do you have any suggestions for what a hermit item would be? Like, I... Um, hmm. Well, I mean, she I sounds know, like she's a pretty... Vit, like, if you, given her, um, you know, the, the, the uh, talents that you took, she does seem like quite the scrapper. Yeah. You know, so maybe... Um, I wonder if there's, like, brass knuckles or something like that? Let's see. There is, yeah. Oh, okay. So, I mean, there's also one. There's also one I thought that would be really kind of dirty, but what's that? Um, they say it's for an assassin, like a Garrett. Like that would be actually for yeah. killing people. But, you know. Um, I mean, I think if she were ever to get into serious trouble, like you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, 
it is, let's see here, the trait it has is uh, ineffective. So it's got entangling, uh, which is immediately after striking a foe, weapons of this quality force a foe to resist either a chokehold or a takedown you choose. Uh, additionally, whenever a foe is threatened with a chokehold or takedown by this weapon, they must flip the results to fail when resisting. So it's pretty cool. Um, it also has uh, ineffective. And this one's on page. They don't deal damage. I'm looking on page. Yeah, it's between uh, page 217 and 221. 221 is where the Garrett is, and I'm just reading what its qualities do. So it's yeah. I mean, it's pretty. It doesn't do any damage, but what it does is it's fast, so it's hard to avoid. And once you actually hit them, they're they have to resist a chokehold or a takedown, and they have to flip the results to the worst. I'm not able to uh, edit my character sheet, Kev, for the photo. The photo. Hold on. Where your character is, Ari? Uh, let's see here. Edit. Yeah, you should be able to. I don't know if I, if I reopen it. Hang on. Yeah. Me... Right. You've, you've got um, hmm. the edit. Albie, what are you looking like? Oh, oh that's great. <laughs> I, I kind of fixated on the fake eye patch. So as soon as I found one that had one, I thought yeah. that's got to be it. That's <laughs> great. So guys, so, here is uh, that's Albi. Nice. Okay. Uh, how are you able to get in there now? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, okay. perfect. Yeah. And then Ebert Reiter, what do you think? I actually have. Yeah, I found the right picture there. Here. Oh, did you find a picture or? No, I'm just trying to find one. Here, I got a, I got a suggestion. Uh, uh -huh. He's missing. I, I, this is more of a traditional D and D thing, but uh, this is something I loaded for our D and D campaign. Yeah, I think he's looking a bit too. Oh, hang on. Oh, man. He's a bit sophisticated, Val. Oh, let's see. <laughs> so where's Abert? Sorry, put that one again. Uh... Oh, sorry. Let me. Uh, where is it here? Boom. That's just something I had loaded well, up recently. Yeah, and I mean, if you, the, do, do not feel you need to pick uh, that one. It's just one I, I happen to have on hand. Uh, you can just do a Google search and try and find uh, something that's more appropriate to your vision for your dude. I'm trying to f Google's not giving me much on medieval football thug. <laughs> medieval, basically, it's Vinnie Jones. <laughs> That's great. Okay, I'll get rid of that dude. All right. Um. Okay. So I think is is everyone pretty much together now? I think. Is that right? Let's see here, Alby. Looking pretty good, Alby. Okay. I'm just gonna. Sorry, Arlen. I'm just poking through to see what you got. Flintlock pistol. Pretty cool. Jewel, did you go with the the Garrett there, uh, Jeff? Yeah. So, and you know what you could do? It could be a Garrett like that's disguised as prayer beads, not to steal something from. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wasn't that in um, um, fuck, what was it? Some shitty Bond film, I thought, or maybe it's just some shitty action film where there's a guy who carried around prayer beads and would use them to Garrett people. Yeah, for sure, I love it. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's like her, yeah. It's like her religious. You know, symbol that she wears. But sure. Okay. I like it. So, ineffective okay. meant it doesn't actually deal damage. Ineffective meant it doesn't deal damage. No, like you can only really use it to try and like get a yeah, uh, yeah. yeah a choke or a takedown. We'll talk about how combat works. Combat is really interesting in this, uh, in the sense that um, it's it reminds me in some ways of PF2, where there's uh, you get that action, uh, the decisions about your action economy, um, but instead of, uh, because you have active defenses in this, you need to take into consideration whether you're saving an action point to defend against things or not. So you can save, you, uh, each character I believe has three action points uh, per turn and then you choose how you uh, how you use them. Uh, use them to like move, to make an attack uh, and then certain types of uh, actions will cost more. 
so it's pretty uh, pretty cool. Cool, so it has okay. action points. This yeah. One, huh? So you, you take a look at page 247 is where it kind of starts. And, and uh, if you want to, um, like when you get into combat, you're going to have to kind of decide where your... Um, uh, blah, 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 uh, whether you want to withhold an action point uh, or not. Okay, I found the uh, picture, so how do I upload? Uh, if you go to edit on the top right of your character sheet, you go to the yep. first tab, edit, and then you there will be an option to upload an, an image from uh, to replace your, or to set a uh, character illustration. You see that? It's on the left side. Let me pop yours open here. That is Everd. Okay, so you go under Bio and Info. And then you hit Edit, uh, James, at the top right there. Yeah. Yeah. And then it should give you the option of uh, uploading an image. How's yours going, Sean? Pretty good. I've got a... I think I've got a candidate or two. Okay. I'm just making, yeah. Sure. There's a limited amount of gnome fops. It's an outrage. <laughs> yeah, the Warhammer <laughs> Fantasy has some uh, recent, uh, because gnomes were introduced in one of their recent, in this sucker here in Rough Days and Hard Night, they've introduced some pictures of greasy gnomes. And I know those have been making the, uh, the rounds on, uh, <laughs> they're more sinister than anything. Right. Like, like, I mean, I've read it, yeah. <laughs> Too many sisters, not enough failed fops. This is one of the nasty little gnome illustrations. I gotta say as well, like, um, very much like uh, Chaosium, uh, Cubicle 7 has been absolutely killing uh, the interior illustrations on their, uh, on their new products. Like, the, all the illustrations uh, in Warhammer Fantasy are fucking crazy. Here's one that Arlen's going to love. Look at that, Arlen. The little uh, rat man coming out of a sewer. Uh, I can't see your camera, but that might oh. not be a bad thing right now. <laughs> Let me hit... Uh, I'd hate for the, the the hard work that went into this illustration to be wasted on you. But uh, look at that. Mm, nasty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, 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 so. Uh, let's see here. I'm thinking that one right uh, right there, Kevin. Let's see. I'm going to go to thing. I'm going to make sure I didn't screw up the stream. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. Well, what do we got? What do we got? Okay, cool. Love it. <laughs> That's great. I, don't even, I can't. What is he holding? Any any idea? Is that his stick? His uh, stick that conceals? I think, it, well, I think it must be, but I don't know what it's supposed to be, what the artist it was. Yeah. That's great. Oh, and, and also, like, all those gears and stuff, your your ancestry trait where you've got... Uh, well, right. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that fits with that as well. I mean, what about that? Pretty cool. Yeah, I've got a weird thing. I can see edit for Jewel, but not for me. Oh, uh, you know what? Maybe try closing the character and then open up the character sheet again. Sometimes it just needs to, to reset. Usually. Aha! Yep. Yeah, and let me... I'll just change Jewel as well, too. Here we go. Uh, I, uh, Jeff wasn't on at the, at the outset, so I couldn't add him as a specific owner of uh, Jewel. Pretty awesome, guys. So actually, I can do this too. Boom. So there is uh, Albie. And oh, there we go. And Ari. And Jewel. Hey, and we got a picture for Evern too. Fuck yes. And Ever. He is a big boy. Cool. All right, guys. Well, why don't we do this? Let's take our uh, our not mid session break. Our <laughs> near the end of the session break, <laughs> and then we'll come back and start setting the stage for uh, next sessions. Um, yeah, next session's adventure. So we'll be back in a moment, folks. Cool.
right. Okay, so. Once uh, Sean gets back, we'll dive into the um, particulars of uh, where you guys will be finding yourselves at the outset of this. What you know I can do in the interim is... Oh, I need to scroll down. What was your... Uh, oh, you were uh, scrawny, is that right, Jeff? Or what was your drawback? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, I'm... No, I'm, I'm uh, lily-livered. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Jeez. Okay. Um, the peril track uh, goes up. Do you you don't have smelling salts, do you, Arlen? Are you character? Um, I don't think so. Okay. So uh, I think Jeff's character does. Uh, smelling salts can be used to go up one track on your um, what do you call it? Uh, on your peril track. So just back, yeah, that's one thing that you guys could uh, help each other with if you're using your um, your ability okay. or your, your uh, profession ability because you get that you go one uh, tick down on the the track but then you can take the smelling salts I think you gain one corruption as a result of that but that you you just roll that at the end of your of the session and we see whether or not you go a step towards order or chaos. are waiting. I'm having an opportunity to scroll way down here. There's a, something I posted. You know, I could have done an image search, I suppose. That would have been faster. I'm curious to see how the uh, uh, what do you call it? The uh, firearms work. Because it seems like they could potentially do a shit ton of damage. As is kind of appropriate, I guess. Mm-hmm. Okay, I am trying to find... Oh, Sean, you're back. Great. All right, guys. So let's talk about our stalwart heroes here. Um, what? Oh, come on. I show your camera is being off, uh, Kevin. I don't know if anyone else can see it. Oh, uh, Maybe just be me. Let me hit reconnect to make sure everyone can see me. There you are. You're just trying to read my poker face. What has he got planned? What is going on in that diseased mind? Uh, He's hiding something. Yeah. So I can't, there's an old... I can't remember what the song is called, but there's a um, uh, Tom Waits song that's about that. Just asking what guys, some guy's plotting in his basement. What's he building down there? Mm -hmm. um, okay, I can't find the, uh, the map that I was looking for here. But uh, this is the map I was looking for, guys. Is right over here. Welcome to the town of Crossings. Technically the city of Crossings, I guess. So Crossings is where our campaign will start, where our story will start at least. You guys are all inhabitants of the city, of the neighborhood of Grievings. So let's talk mm -hmm. about some of the characteristics of the town of uh, Crossings. Um, Crossings, uh, forgive me. Um, so Crossings has, uh, let's see here. Uh, it is at the center of a region known as the, uh, or a region known as the Northern Reach. Um, crossings spread across a series of hills overlooking a lake known as the Dark Waters. Six pale spires rise above the city, obscured by the perpetual smoke spewing from the stacks of the industrial district. Uh, miles of farmland spread to the east, while rolling hills known as the Barrows form a natural border to the south, curving around to the Black Hills, where the city pyres uh, iron ore from the dwarf dug mines deep beneath the earth. The present city is the latest in a long line of communities that have stood on the shores of the dark waters. Evidence of previ previous settlements can be seen in the city's architecture from looming fairy spires 
to the arches left by the first people, to the castles raised by the Edin when they ruled these lands. The city's cobbled streets, ancient cemeteries, and statues of people and events long forgotten have all withstood the tide of years. The crossings of today grew from exiles, bandits, and refugees fleeing the, the empire's tyranny and squatting in the ruins of a town emptied by the plague. Though the new settlement was a lawless and dangerous place, the influx of settlers and the march of crusaders to establish their citadels tempered uh, the community's excesses and helped its people establish a rule of law that has made the last century a stable one. Isolation and wealth have given crossings a great deal of autonomy, and the city acknowledges the rule of the provincial capital of Sixton in name only. The well, um, I think we'll just use the uh, the background of um, Shadow Demon Lords, uh, like in broad strokes of the setting. There is a massive far to the south. There is there was a massive empire, but what you've heard is that the emperor was murdered on his throne by his orc bodyguards, and that the mm. empire has sort of fallen into anarchy. Um, that doesn't really affect your day to day life in crossings. Uh, it you know uh, the day, the days sort of carry on the way they normally do. Um, and for you guys, even the, um, the, the hobnobbing of the higher classes is really not something you, I, I think that Ari, you may meet some of those, um, you know, some of the nobility and whatnot when they slum, but at best that's, that's the extent of your involvement with the, even the middle-class merchants. Um, you, the, uh, humans make up the most of the people living in the city, uh, but, um, and half the population can trace its ancestry to the indigenous peoples of the North Reaches and are distinguished by their auburn hair and dusky features. Uh, many also have tribal tattoos that often depict divine symbols of the old faith gods. And there's a division in uh, here. The sort of like, you know, generic good faith is uh, the uh, Church of the New God. And that's probably where you're from, Jewel. Um, the martyr for this, it's very much kind of like an ersatz Christian faith. Uh, there's saints, there's, you know, um, belief in um, the um, kind of like the benevolence leading to redemption after death and Astrid is the founder of this faith who was pierced by nine I think it's nine or ten swords and all shrines of her depict her with all these swords having been betrayed by um, the uh, members of the imperial I think it's members of the imperial uh, nobility uh, and the believers in the old faith um, you can change it if you like, uh, Jeff. I'm not fussed. Old faith is more kind of like druidic type beliefs, you know, the the okay. traditional kind of like nor sort of something similar to like Norse beliefs, but not quite. Um, or there's the new faith, and and the new god is sort of what's been around for the last several hundred years, and and uh, the main kind of character that you all have in common, um, a guy named Father Gregory, who runs a small shrine and provides ministrations to the. Um, to the poor in the town, in the neighborhood of Grievings, um, he is a follower of the new faith and maintains a small shrine uh, to the new faith or faith in the new God. Um, what else? There are, in addition to humans, um, gnomes are the second most uh, significant population in the city. However, their numbers are even larger in the countryside where they maintain farms and tend their herds. Uh, gnomes mingle freely with humans and marriages between humans and gnomes happen from time to time. Alongside those two races, Crossings features all other people living in and around the Empire, brutish orcs, um, you know, uh, inscrutable elves, uh, even goblins, and um, uh, what other races here, and halflings uh, as well. I'm trying to retrofit this to the sensibilities of uh, Zweihander on the fly. It's a small city of some 19,000 people with half again living on farms and small villages that surround it. But the most, um, say, you know, apart from the different, you know, there's neighborhoods that are rich, there's neighborhoods that are poor. One of the main characteristics that stands out is these white spires that you see around the, the city. Um, six slender towers of white stone climb above the city, each one standing exactly 33 yards tall. The folk of crossings believe that the towers were built by the Fae and named them as such years ago. However, the true history and purpose of them are long lost. There's uh, lots of people who will share their theories with people who are new to the city. 
uh, about what their true purpose is and who their true architects were. But it's really one of those mysteries that gets lost. And once you get lost in the um, day-to-day hustle and bustle of trying to get through your, you know, your day, um, you kind of forget that they're there. So uh, any of you guys who are, um, I don't know, do you, do you think you all are native to crossings? Yeah, probably. Yeah? Okay. And Jewel, what, you, you as well? Or do you think you're from elsewhere? Yeah, I think she's from Crossings. I think yeah. it makes sense. So for now, because we're starting in Grievings, Grievings is the poorest and also the most densely populated district in Crossings. Uh, positioned above the tankards and below smokestacks on the eastern slopes of the city, it is a tangled, crowded place of tall row houses and narrow streets made narrower by the tents and shacks lining them. Grievings is a desperate and dangerous district whose people work as servants in coins, toil in smokestacks, and labor anywhere else they can find work in the city. Although the district is infested with vermin and riddled with disease, Grievings people are proud and independent. They look after each other and mete out their own brand of justice to those who would cross them. Uh, the law enforcement in Crossings is an organization called the Brown Cloaks. Um, they are members of the Watch who take their name from the drab brown cloaks they wear as part of their uniform. With only 90 members, the Brown Cloaks focus their efforts on protecting the wealthier members of Crossings. They leave the poor to sort out their own affairs, unless those affairs affect the rich and powerful. Um, the last thing I'll tell you about is the Dark Waters, the lake that leads, that is off the, um, the northern shore there. So the Dark Waters, uh, it's a lake that feeds the people of crossings with fish and waterfowl. But despite this bounty, the lake is a source of fear. Many believe that spirits and fey haunt the islands that dot the lake and that such wicked entities yearn to lure fisher folk to their doom. Some intrepid explorers claim that many of the lake's islands sport ruins featuring fabulous treasures and deadly guardians. But those same um, uh, gossip mongers uh, are not willing to actually go out and explore those uh, islands. So this is the setting for our story, guys. And we can talk about, if you have questions about some of the other districts, we can deal with that. But we're starting off in Grievings. What we know is that you guys have, um, well, first, let's do this. Before we talk about your connection to how we're starting this adventure, let's talk about our characters. How do you guys know each other? In passing, as friends? Um, and maybe to start off, let's start the ball rolling. Let's talk about what your day-to-day -day lives, uh, your lives are like. So, uh, who would like to go first? Who wants to tell us a little bit about uh, what their characters, you know, um, what their day-to-day -day activities are like? And maybe what I'll do, guys, I'll bring over your token so we can keep an illustration in mind. Uh, anyone? Go right ahead. So, Ari is, uh, I think he tried too hard and uh, just just didn't live up to uh, family expectations. Um, just got into a lot of complications until he, he finally was kind of ostracized by the gnomes in the town. Okay. And so he mainly hangs around humans. So it um, wasn't a matter, for the brand, uh, then it wasn't a matter of him um, necessarily, you know, uh, ha having been branded from birth. It was something he did. Yeah, I mean he's a little bit um, a little bit slow in the uptake, um, and yet and yet uh, tries too hard from a gregarious standpoint. So he's annoying. <laughs> I love um, it. Yeah, <laughs> you know he's the guy that's trying to make the jokes, and everyone's looking at each other, going, yep. "Wow, you know, <laughs> too much, too much." And he's the first one to laugh at his own jokes. Right, definitely thinks he's clever, wants to be clever. So he mainly hangs around and, and doesn't have any way to support himself. So it just became a fop out of um, out of necessity, and he and he's he's more accepted among humans than he is gnomes, but that's a low bar. So he thinks he's successful uh, yeah. in a sense. Um, you know, they they tol humans tolerate him where the gnomes kind of don't at this okay. point. Um, and so he spends most of his time in taverns, uh, looking for a patron. 
yep. you know, looking for uh, someone with money to uh, he's, um, you know, he's reasonably OK looking. He's sort of, you know, he's charming in an annoying kind of way. And so periodically he gets people to support him. And so uh, he found that worked once and he's hooked. Yeah. So the the current place, having fallen quite hard on your uh, times, knowing that you have barely a couple of coppers to rub together, there mm-hmm. is a place called um, a rundown tap room situated between a burned down tenement and a brothel called the Fallen Soldier. <laughs> it's run by there a guy named Quirion Verge, a portly man with shaggy black hair and a sweep of blisters on the back of his neck. Um, this tap room reeks of vomit and piss and boasts a single bar with a few stools, a couple of tables, and a hearth that's never lit. What's the guy's name again? Quirion Verge. So I'll put it in the chat for you. Okay. I mean, I, I'm thinking this is not where um, Ari wants to hang out. This Definitely is where he not. hangs out when he doesn't have a patron. Yeah, yeah. So okay. when he has a patron, he's clearly going to better places. But okay. this is where he drinks on his own. All right. Um... Who else wants to tell, tell us about their character? Well, I so Albumen, I'm imagining, has kind of a, a circuit of taverns that he goes to to because he makes his money by gambling, right? So yeah. you can't you can't poison the well at any one of them. Can't take too much at any given time. Yeah. And then, of course, that's also dependent on how much he has because the buy-in is going to be bigger at the nicer taverns. So especially when he's really down on his luck, it's trying to scrape together a couple of coppers to to take a couple of coppers from the even poorer people of the terrible tavern that he goes to. Yeah. Well, this could be also the Fallen Soldier could be your home that you never play. You don't shit where you eat kind of stuff. Oh, where, yeah. That, that would make sense, too, is, you know. Yeah, this is the place where you never, you know, you can just relax and drink. You don't need to worry about some, you know, a guy who you, you know, che- not cheated maybe, but you took his last, you know, silver shilling uh, at a game shiving you in the back because you, uh, you know, uh, you seem vulnerable. Here you can Makes relax and, and have a beer. Okay. What about um, uh, Ebert or Jewel? I reckon Ebert plies his trade from the uh, local brewer, uh, brewery yep. and delivers around all of the taverns of the town, one yep. of which is the Fallen Soldier, and he moonlights as a uh, bouncer as well. Love it. At various of these bars. Let's say you're the bouncer at Fallen Soldier. Okay. Okay, so you uh, that, that explains why you're kind of, you know, why you'd be loitering around here. Um and I love the idea of the one-armed or one-handed bouncer as well, too. That is like, it's a little bit of flourish that like mediocre DMs would put in. It's a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I will take that mediocre low-hanging fruit for this DM. Um, and how about you, Jewel? What's uh, what's Jewel's sort of day-to-day like? I think that uh, Jewel kind of survives on maybe like the kindness of others because she's just sort of like. Uh, Maybe she's seen as a bit of a mystic. She gives people sort of religious advice and, yep. you know, her word is sort of um, people, you know, put faith in what she's saying that it's got some merit. Yeah. I think that you maybe, um, you know, s- s- kind of uh, sit around uh, near uh, this place called the Shrine of the Ascended. What do you what are you thinking in terms of her her actual faith? Like is she does she follow the old uh, faith or is she a follower of the Church of the New God? Um probably the Church of the New God. Okay. So that would make sense why you know Father Gregory. Um so F- Father Gregory is uh really a like I said a true champion of the downtrodden. Uh Father Gregory uh, works in Crossing's poorest district. Uh, blah, 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 blah. He maintains something called the Shrine of the Ascended. Uh, and the small shrine features a modest worship area with pews, an altar, and an icon of Astrid pierced by swords. Uh, a door in the worship area leads to a short hall with doors on either side. Um, one leads to a small room with a pair of bunk beds for any of Gregory's flock who need shelter. So maybe that's where you sleep, Jewel? Because uh, you, yeah, okay. Uh, and the other one is the priest's apartment. Uh, so uh, the apartment contains a hold on, yeah. 
So that's sort of, you know, um, you probably sit outside, you know, uh, of the actual shrine. Don't sit in there, but you sit out and then as people come by, maybe they, they get their wisdom from you or they ask you for, you know, guidance for, for the new, um, from um, uh, the new god. Yeah. Okay. And uh, this is not too far away from the, uh, what do you call it? From um, the uh, old, the fallen soldier. And let's see here. I'm trying to see if there's any. Do any of you guys indulge in any? Uh, okay, so here's here's some of the things that have, have happened over the, the past. Um, let's see here. The past week. Um. Why don't we get you guys? Uh, let me. I'm just going to open up my um, oh, character sheet here. I can't remember what the skills are called offhand. Um, uh, would you guys kindly? Let's see here. Um, uh, Ebert, um, Albi, and Ari. Would you give me a, a um, awareness check, please? That's under perception. I'll give you plus 10 as well, too. These are routine tasks. Let's see here. Nice. Okay, Ari. Nice as well. And Ebert. Oh, although, Albi, I think you added yours as to the difficulty rather than no I it's it's uh, it's showing the same thing basically okay that I instead of typing in the modifier I clicked the routine box at the top of the oh chart. perfect yeah there you go okay and uh, Ebert here we go Ebert's oh, not call. not aware alright so I think um, Albi this is something you've noticed so this is yeah, you can tell me whether you would ever indulge in this but there is a one of the regular uh, patrons of the uh, Fallen Soldier is um, a woman named Asa Min. Uh, and Asa Min is an aging uh, and somewhat down on her luck prostitute. Um, she is, unfortunately, as well, a bit of a horrible drunk. Uh, so when she is, um, uh, you know, does have money, she will often, you know, push the, the limits of uh, Quirion's patience in the fallen soldier until she gets drunk enough and belligerent enough where he finally kicks her out. Um, it, over the last week, you've noticed that she just has not been around. You know, it's a weird, and it's one of those notices that, you know, like when you go to your hometown and some, they've built a new building somewhere and you're like, what is, what's off with this? Um, so it's a, it's not necessarily something that you miss, but it's something you notice. This and is Ari. This is uh, Ari. Yeah, Ari noticed this. Okay. Oh, sorry, not Ari. Ari. It's um, Albi. Forgive me. Okay. Albi noticed this. Albi, you, you've picked up that she's not there. Do you think you would have um, engaged in Ace's um, professional services at any point? Or do you think you would? No, I don't think. I think that's something that I do when I'm at one of the nicer places. Because I know, yeah. you know, better to test your luck there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so but she, that I am kind of concerned because this is right. This is a sort of place that means something to me, and so when there's a sort of change in scenery, it's a little, a little off-putting. Yeah. Um, Ebert, um, you know that there is uh, because you know kind of the, um, you know the the folks who are the you know crippled and bastards and whatever, uh, all sort of hang together. You know. Uh, there is an old uh, paraplegic uh, named uh, Old Pete who lived in an alley behind the fallen soldier. And uh, am I correct in thinking that Everett may have had a little bit of uh, sympathy for this maimed, you know, uh, veteran uh, and it brought him food every now and then? We'll say yes, but he's not normally that kind-hearted. Okay. Well, in this guy, yeah. And for this <laughs> particular... an exception for him. Yeah, because he... Well, and he probably, like, whatever type of personality that, uh, you know, that Ebert would have gone kind of gone with, uh, that's that the... Him. 
yeah, it, it would be. We'll say that that's what old Pete was like. Old yep. Pete was just the kind of like, what the fuck are you looking at? If that's the the you know kind that would he would look at. What are you bringing me that slop for? I'm not going to eat it, but he would, of course, eat it because he has nothing else. Uh, so old Pete has likewise um, gone missing. Uh, he's just not where he normally is, you know, and that's just not like him. He's sort of there's this you know abusive symbiotic relationship he's got with a fallen soldier, where he he eats regularly behind there. Um, and um, Jewel. Um, most recently, uh, you have noticed there is in the sort of the open square and like in in, in uh, grievings, there's not really a lot of very big open areas. So this is like you know maybe something the size of a generous apartment is the like the square where the shrine of the ascended is. Big okay. tall buildings up on either side. You sit there normally, and then normally on the far side there is this filthy mouth blind beggar named Vern. Mm, you know, okay. a marked contrast between your the, the whatever kind of presentation that you offer and what Vern offers. And Vern is just, you know, screaming profanities at people as he goes in. But Father Gregory has never asked to have him removed. And the people of Grievings, you know, they offer him some... He's not abusive. He's just, you know, where a thank you would suffice. He says that they're, you're a fucking terror, you know, wonderful fucking person. And that's <laughs> him, you know. Um... Vern, two days ago, Vern uh, went missing. Mm. Didn't show up for his uh, his normal begging um, and has not been seen uh, since. But what is more troubling for you, Jewel, uh, is that uh, when you arose in the morning uh, for uh, today, or for yesterday, um, Father Gregory was gone. Oh, man. Um, word kind of made it to someone that you recognize. There is uh, the grievings is normally the neighborhood that no one, no one in the brown cloaks really concerns themselves with, unless they're trying to track down something that's happened to some rich, you know, highfalutin person in uh, in coins or in one of the um, the other more affluent areas. But there is a, an exception there. There's someone named Sergeant Elise. Uh, and Sergeant Elise, and I'll put Elise's name in uh, chat here. Sergeant Elise is an exception to that. Uh, she Maybe it's her youth, maybe it's her more modest um, uh, origins, but Sergeant Elise is a little concerned about uh, particularly the dis disappearance of Father Gregory. So um, I think that... Um, we're almost at, qu at the quit time here, guys, but let's maybe do a little bit of, of role-playing here to kind of set the stage and maybe roll some dice to figure out what we're doing next session. So what... Um, uh, let's say that this is... Um, uh, well, I guess first off, Jeff, what, how do you think Jewel would react to Father Gregory being gone? This is the second day after this. You, you've maybe spoken to Elise, who, who had asked about uh, Father Gregory. And why don't we do this? Let's... Um, uh, well, first off, what do you think Jules' reaction to Gregory being gone would be? Would you, would you still open the shrine to the public? Would you keep it closed and just do your prayers? What, what do you think? Um, I think if he wasn't there, yeah, I may not open up to the public that day. Okay. I, you know, maybe she gets a lot of her strength from him in some ways as far as, you know, meeting with the public and all that. Yeah, yeah. So, um... I don't think that Father Gregory has invited you into his private quarters uh, ever, but do you think that um, with him being missing, you would have checked in there? Yeah, you know what? I think I would go check in there. Okay. Like, even just to double check to make sure he wasn't, you know, ill yeah, or, or... sick or... Exactly. So, for sure I would. you know, making your way for the first time over there and opening the door, it's not locked. Um, what you find is... His bed uh, has not been slept in, and you can find that uh, there is a writing desk on which rests a, a holy book, uh, papers, a quill, a pot of ink, and a bag of fine sand. Um, you can see that there is a holy symbol uh, for the new god hanging from a nail on the wall, and 
other than that, there's nothing that doesn't appear there's any kind of struggle. It doesn't appear that there was any, you know, um, that, that uh, he was dragged out of here. His, his bed seems to have been made. Uh, so he, it's not like he was, you know, called out of his bed in the middle of the night or something like that. He's just gone. He's just gone. So maybe when, um, uh, when, you know, what the first thing you find after dealing with the people coming in trying to pray, you know, and do you think Jewel would have turned them away, or do you think she would have just not answered the door? What, what's how willing to yeah, deal? Yeah, I, I think she would have. Um, maybe she's just put a sign on the door. I'm assuming she's literate. Uh, I don't. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know if that's true, actually. <laughs> um, if not, maybe there is some kind of a sign or a symbol or some kind of way to indicate that the shr that it's closed. Okay. That she just knows how to do. Like, if she can't necessarily write the sign herself, maybe there is something that she puts up to let people know. Sure. You know, Father Gregory is out, or what, whatever the. Okay. Or maybe something he's done in the past to indicate, like when he's gone on travels or when he's. Sure. You know, not available. Now, guys, so do you that. think that um, Alby, uh, Ari, or Ebert would have any connection with uh, Father Gregory? I think uh, Father Gregory has been after Ari for a little while now to, like, kind of straighten up and get serious. And, and Ari's like, you know, he appreciates the attention to some extent, but he brushes it off, you know, as the, yep. yeah, yeah, you know, I, I've, right, right, Father, you know, and moves on. Okay. Well, Ebert and uh, Ari, or Albi. From the way you guys have described, they don't strike me as particularly uh, religious or uh, devout types. No, not not particularly devout, but willing to kind of when he thinks of it. I think Albi makes a a donation to the church as a kind of keep my luck good, and I'll keep okay. giving to you guys. So, thing, but he's... so let's pick up a scene here where uh, Albie's, you know, kind of making his way. He's had a good, you know, a round of cards and you're making your way through that, that tiny little square. Um, would you give me another awareness uh, check? I'll give you a plus 10 on that as well. Nope. Nice. Okay. Oh, not great. All right. So um, what I was trying to see if whether you would have noticed that uh, uh, old Pete it was uh, not old Pete that um, Vern, the would you know the foul mouth beggar was gone or not. But uh, what you do, you you know you you make your way into that um, through the winding tight streets and uh, you know rubbish strewn things. Kids go racing past you in in the alleyways. You make your way into the small clearing. Uh, what's going on with my camera here? Come on, camera, quit fucking around. Uh, you make your way into the. Um, uh, the, the square where uh, the Shrine of the Ascended is located. And you can see that um, Jewel is arguing with some, um, you know, bossy housewife uh, who is, is trying to get in, and Jewel is, is trying to make it clear to this woman that we're, you cannot come in. And she's saying, well, I need to offer something. And this is unusual. You've seen Jewel around, uh, I think, but you have not seen her, you know, working... Um, uh, you know, with Father Gregory in any direct way. She's never helped with services. She's never, you know, been inside there. Why, in fact, why is she in there? Look at the way she's dressed. She's not in the in the long white robes that you would see, expect of the Church of the New God. Uh, what happens next? And either Jewel or... So, so, Jewel, you're trying to deal with this woman, trying to get her to... Yeah. Look, Father Gregory is not here. We are not open. Why are you in there? I don't understand. This is... I... I I want to see Father Gregory. I need to speak with him about something. My 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 husband is. I. I why are you in there? So, Alby, you can overhear this as well. Jewel, what are you trying to do here? I I don't know. Trying to keep her out. Okay. So, do you? Are you trying to uh, like reason with this lady, or are you trying yeah, to? Yeah, just... I think I'm trying to uh, reason with her that there's there's no reason to come. Father Gregory is not here. Sure. Why don't you give me a charm check, and I'll give you a, a plus ten. You are uh, part of the uh, the faithful and whatnot. In fact, I'll, I'll give you a plus twenty to that roll. Okay, and so you roll on charm. Uh, a charm, and then I, th I think there should yes, charm exactly. 
And then it should. And I get plus you. five because of being human. Is that how that works? Uh, because of your manifest destiny, yeah. So you'll get a total of plus twenty-five. Okay. Okay. Did that work? Yeah. So she. Oh yeah. Kind of. Um. She calms down a bit. You. You. Her, your words do get to her, and she says, "Farewell." Do. You, do you know when to expect him back? No, unfortunately, I, I wish I'd known. I, I'm not sure where he's gone. He didn't leave a note or a message or say anything. That's so not... That is very unlike him. I know. I'm worried. Uh, Albie, why don't you give me an eavesdrop roll at plus 10, please? Getting an eavesdrop roll in there. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that thing's on the character sheet. We're damn well using it. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. So you're... Uh, what, what do we see with Albie here? So Albie's kind of... He sees that he's there, and he sort of sidles off, and he's kind of just waiting for this, because he, he can tell that this woman is being kind of placated and all that sort of stuff, but he's he's a bit of a tougher customer. He's going to yeah. make it harder for this this mystic to you know, turn him away. Sure. So this lady finishes, you know, uh, Jewel manages to um, to kind of calm the lady and uh, to at least kind of send her on your way. Do you want to say anything else to this lady? Like, do you try and, and inquire about her problems or anything like that? Or are you really no, just... I just I, at this point, I just tell her, you know, sorry for the inconvenience. I'm, I'm going to see if I can find anything about where Father Gregory has gone to. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Young lady, I'm, I'm sorry. I've seen you uh, on the street so many times. I, I don't know your name. Forgive me. Uh, my name is Jewel. Thank you, you Jewel. Are? Uh, this was, uh, I am Agatha. You uh, can call me Aggie. And she kind of pats your hand. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Jewel. The new god watch over you. And uh, she leaves. So, uh, Albie, you see that uh, this, this lady goes away and... Uh, Jewel does not seem to have... Uh, why don't you... Uh, Jewel, give me a... Uh, just a flat awareness uh, check, please. Let's see if you can spot this. Um, do you have your eye patch up or down? Eye patch down. Nice. I've got it almost always down, except, you know... Yeah. So it's of. optional? It's... Yeah. yeah, it's not a... It's not <laughs> necessary to cover up, like, a... Nice. A damaged eye or anything yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Jewel, you're obviously your mind is miles away, so you um, uh, you you don't notice him. Let's quickly uh, take a moment to just talk about uh, fortune points. So you guys mm. have a number of fortune points equal to the number of players, uh, and um, I have uh, fortune points as well too, uh, which I believe is equal to the number of players. When those you guys, are different than fate points, right? Different from fate points. Fate points are your don't kill me points. Okay. Fortune yep. are the re-roll points. It's a pool gotcha. of points. So if you want to draw, like you guys can freely draw on them, but once they're gone, they're gone. Um, cool. So the, um, and those last for the adventure, not the session. So it's a little okay. different than um, a lot of the other uh, meta currency that we play with. Uh, Jewel does not notice, you know, that uh, you're there, Albie, so she looks like she's going to go in and, and close the, the door to the shrine. This should be open at this point, and Father Gregory should be here. Uh, what do you do? I'm going to kind of rush up and put my foot in the door as she's closing it. Okay. This surprises you, Jewel. I don't think you you were aware that someone was there. You turned around, and there's suddenly oh. this handsome, you know, um, eye-patch-wearing, you know, one-eyed guy. Oh, sir. Sorry, I, I didn't see you there. Oh, well, that's, that's fair, all right. If you could just let me in so I could make my donation and be on my way, that would be... Well, I'm sorry, but we're not open today. The Father Gregory is not here. Father Gregory is not here? No. And therefore you're not open? That's correct. But are you sure? Because I have I have a donation to make to the church, and it seems like that would be... Surely Father Gregory would prefer, even in his absence, that the church receive its its tithe. So, Albie, you are you are inside the small shrine now, and again, it's um, it's a very modest worship area with pews, and then an altar, and then an icon of Astrid pierced by swords. A uh, door on one side that leads to some rooms and a door on the other side. And I think that uh, you, Jewel, would you have closed both doors uh, before? 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So you can't see where they lead. Um, but what you can tell Albie is that there's no Father Gregory in here. Mm. So what are we seeing? So Albie kind of looks around and he's sort of thinking, is there a, a spot to make donations, like a yeah. box or something? Probably so. right near the altar. Uh, there is probably yeah. a... Yeah. So he's going to walk up to the altar and he's starting, he's counting out coins and he's got, you know, maybe like, you know, a silver or something like that. Probably a, a big donation and he puts that back and pulls out a couple of copper to, you know... To supplement it? A little more modest. And okay. he, you know, puts that in the box and he says clearly large enough for Jewel to... loud enough for Jewel to heal. You'd think that after six or so swords, they would have, you know, stopped, right? Okay. Mm. So he's making light of uh, the suffering of uh, Astrid, the, uh, the, yep. the yeah, yeah, founder yeah. of your faith yep. there, Jewel. What do you, what do you, <laughs> how do you react? She, uh, I think she's not the kind of person to get into an argument with someone. So she's, um, she sort of giggles it off, like laughs it off. Passive aggressive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, so uh, w would that upset her? Um, m Probably mildly. Okay. So let's do this. Uh, you, um, uh, Albie, give me an... Uh, I, I, it sounds like you were trying to judge her reaction. Is that right? Basically, yeah. yeah, yeah. Trying to kind of mess with her just a little bit to see what she does. Sure. So you give us a flat awareness check. And Jewel, would you kindly give us a... Uh, let's see here. What would that be? Um, a guile check at plus 10. Plus 15, because if, if you don't have uh, levels in it. Uh, guile. Whoa. Yeah, nice. so you... Nice. She, she laughs, and you take it to be, you know, like, okay, she's chuckling along with this. So I don't know about what you draw from that, whether it's uh, someone who is a good-natured follower of, of Astrid or someone who isn't uh, genuinely devoted at all. Um, yeah, but I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of put that in my back pocket, and then again I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of turn to her this time and as a direct question, you know when Father Gregory will be back? No, sorry, I don't. Hmm. And he didn't leave a note or. None that I have discovered yet. People keep arriving, and it's been hard to check much. Well... Hmm. So you guys hear a, a knock at the door again, and Jewel, this is another person trying to come in. Or maybe, you know what, because he came in, you didn't think to lock, lock it. The door opens, and you hear this kind of like, excuse me, and you both look over, and it's a brown cloak. Uh, mm. It's a young woman uh, in her early 20s. Uh, she's... I'm picturing... Um, I can't remember the actress's name, but it's the one from... Uh, she plays Tulip in Preacher, and she played the Queen in uh, World of Warcraft. Um, she's an Irish actress, and I can't remember what her darn name is. Um, but dark, short dark hair, big dark eyes, small, but like with a real presence. Um, so she looks, and why don't, um, let's do this. So let's have each of you guys give me, uh, a, an awareness plus 10 check, please. See if you recognize, uh, Sergeant Elise or not. So Albie doesn't, but let's see. Oh, and, uh, Jewel doesn't either. So you, what the hell's a brown cloak doing here? What do you guys yeah. say? Yeah. Hmm. Um, so I think Albie, pretty immediately, you can see his his one uncovered eye is going back and forth over, are there any extra exits to this building, or is there a brown cloak standing at the one way out? Yeah, <laughs> it does appear, whatever may be behind those doors, you're not sure, but uh, you know that, that does seem to be the only way out. Yep. So she says, um, the, uh, sorry, is, is Father Gregory around? No, he's not here. Sorry. And she looks... Uh, you don't need to make any rolls for it, but you can tell like she has a look of, of concern. And she says, and 
I'm sorry, who who are you then? Which is way Jewel? I think actually she knows you because of her patrolling this neighborhood. You're Jewel, is that right? That's correct. You have been staying with Father Gregory. Yes, I have. Do you know where he he went? Or has I he do not know? He, he didn't ne- leave a note or a message. Do you have some idea where he could have gone? Um, if he's gone, that means he is... He may be the latest in a series of individuals who have gone missing. There's been... I know you are. I know you from this neighborhood, and you, you look familiar to me as well. And I'm just gonna make an awareness check for her. Let's see if she's uh, uh, spotted you before there, Alvi. Uh, if you uh, do, you keep a low profile, or do you in this neighborhood at least people would know who we are, who you are? No, I think in this neighborhood people know about me. Okay, and she looks at you and she says, "You're the gambler." Um, Hi. Alfie. That's pretty close. Pleased to meet you. And you as well. I'm, uh, my, my name is Elise, uh, Sergeant Elise. Um, and you, she doesn't bother to re- reference the fact that she's with the brown cloaks, but you can tell that that's sort of what's, you know, what her connection is. Um, she says, have you, have you noticed people disappearing here? Even more so than usual. Grievings is, can be an unforgiving place, but Father Gregory's gone. He is the latest in a series. He is the sixth disappearance this week. And you, your mind immediately goes, Alfie to, or um, uh, Albie, sorry, to uh, Asa Min. Mm-hmm. That's right. She's been gone. Mm-hmm. Didn't Ebert say something about Pete being gone as well? Old Pete. And I guess you think as well too, Jewel, that Vern, Vern's gone yeah. missing. Vern is missing. And she says, yes, you you knew Vern. Vern was the latest know. before Father Gregory. But and she she reaches in her cloak. She pulls out kind of like a, a leather-bound little like notebook kind of thing. And she says, um, a woman named uh, Asa Min uh, seemed to be the first. And then um, a, a veteran named Peter... Uh, an orphan named Trout, a fortune teller named Enid, Tyrus, an ex-soldier said to have been touched by Revel, uh, Ar- and uh, Albie, you know, you know uh, Tyrus. Tyrus used to, he was a character as well too. He made Asa Min look like a tame person. He Revel mm. is one of the gods of the old faith, and he believed that he was touched by Revel. He used to rant and rave about stuff, and there's actually something you're you think that Ebert had a run-in with him recently, too. He had to be escorted out because he kept rant- ranting and raving about something. But Tyrus also has gone missing, then Vern, and now Father Gregory. Five disappearances. And one of you know, one of the things that can be said about grievings um, is that it is certainly an unsubtle place. If a body is going to be found, it'll be found because usually there's a reason for that message being sent for individuals to vanish altogether and this many in such a short period is very unusual. Mm. Well, are we are we sure that Father Gregory cuz he could just be away for a day or two, you know. Um so, and I think Albie as soon as you say that you know it's yep. just not like that man dedicated his life to the to the uh, faith of the new god and the poor in grievings. It's just you, as soon as you say that, it, are you able to, do you think you'd you'd be able to convincingly say that as kind of like, oh, come on. Or do you think you, you sort of like. Well, I think it sort of, it sort of starts that way. And then Peter's out as soon as, and there's, you know, dead silence in the room is it's very clear that I was trying to make light of something that everybody is aware. Yeah. And all you, and you all know that sort of thing too. So there's a bit of dead silence. She says, then Father Gregory, we've. We've gotten, we have no leads. And I, Father Gregory, though a, a devout man, this is not the sort of matter that can attract uh, more than one brown cloak's attention. The, 
if he does um, if he does resurface if it is a simple matter of misunderstanding and she turns to you Joel would you please let him know to contact Sergeant Elise just so I know otherwise I you don't happen you haven't heard anything about these disappearances about any of these persons you didn't see anything did you Jewel, I know you frequent the I, square outside. I, I don't know anything. I I haven't seen anything. Or have I? I don't think no, so. No, you, you haven't. It just you, What you notice is that Pete, you know, uh, that, um, not Pete, Vern. Vern just wasn't there two days ago. Hmm. And she sort of, like, wait, unless you guys respond, she sort of says, I see. <sighs> then... Again, if he if he does uh, return, please let him know to contact Sergeant Elise. Yeah, of course, immediately. The new god will go with you and uh, or watch over you, and she turns and, and leaves, leaving you two. So, Albie, it, something sits in your. <clears throat> you think that Ebert had. Uh, a run in with Tyrus. Now you think of it, Tyrus hasn't been around for the last couple of days, but that's not... Revel sometimes takes him... Revel is the god, the old god, uh, from the old faith, of uh, um, wine and celebration and ecstatic madness and things like that. Uh, so it's not unusual for him to not be around. Um, but now that you think of it, he... After that altercation with Ebert, I, I don't think he's been back. And he's not the type to be chastised and to not come back, right? Like... He, he's uh, he's that kind of regular where um, uh, he will uh, what's his name um, uh, Quirion will will put up with that kind of bullshit. Would you bring that up to Ebert when you? Yeah, I I mention around to to some of the guys like you know, hey, it sounds like there there's some people who have right there used what's happened to. To what's the name, Tabard? Uh, to fallen soldier. What? No, no, no. The 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 name of the the guy devoted to rebel in particular. Oh, uh, Tyrus. 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 What? Ever you you had a run in with Tyrus, right? Do you know what happened to him? And we can say this was happening back at Ebert's maybe off shift and getting ready to you know go out. And Ari, being the you know intrepid busybody that you are, you're maybe listening in on this as well. Uh, so, Ari's in the scene, but listening in from this. Ebert, uh, uh, Albie walks up, and we'll, we'll end on the scene here, guys. I know we've gone over time. Um, the uh, Albie walks up to you, Ebert, and you're sort of, you know, getting yourself settled outside. And go ahead, guys. That mouthy bugger. Yeah, I gave him a smack and then sent him on his way. So, what you recall him ranting about, Ebert, is. Uh, when he was, you know, uh, ranting and whatever else, uh, he um, claimed uh, that he saw an odd man in a cloak, a hooded cloak, snatching orphans. In particular, he says he snatched that orphan, that trout. Trout's a little, a kid who's a pickpocket in kind of the, the neighborhood. Um, that he saw the um, an odd man in a cloak steal him steal that kid so he was just coming up with some cockamamie story like like he always does sing about somebody abducting kids and rubbish like that but he's always talking big mouth abducting kids or abducting one specific kid well, he talked about several kids, but he said about that trout kid. Ari, would you kindly give me a uh, an awareness check as well? At uh, we'll give you plus twenty because of um, this. This is the nature of the of you. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Awesome. Nice. Okay. 
so you know you um you talk about this and you you know the this happened the the uh, kid went missing about uh four days ago five days ago so near the beginning of the week um and then he was in drinking and whatnot uh and then from what this um the miss the uh sergeant elise said uh alby or uh yeah alby the order was at, that uh asa min went missing then old pete then trout then enid then tyrus so tyrus was two days afterwards when he went missing but ari you're trying to think about what um you know um what uh people have been sort of saying and whatnot and the rule was the, your role was so good two things that you remember one of the things that's been talked about at the Fallen Soldier the last little while is that a strange man wearing a hooded cloak has been seen skulking through the alleys of grievings in the last um, week or so, but he always runs when approaches hmm. or when approached. And I'm at the uh, temple. Yeah, you, no, no, you're at the um, at uh, the Fallen Soldier. Fallen Soldier. Okay. Yeah, Ebert and uh, Albie are talking about this stuff as Ebert's getting himself set up and whatnot, and you're sort of overhearing nursing your you know crappy beer that you could afford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, one thing you actually, remember. Actually, it's probably one that I found. It was just sitting on the bar that someone yeah. left. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, the other thing you recall, and and Albie, would you share with like would you have told Ebert at all about these the extra disappearances or the other ones? Uh, not yet. I was going to kind of start in on that. Sure, now go that ahead. We've established. Yep. Yeah, so, um, Ever, there's the brown cloaks think there's something going on. Tyrus, they think he's missing, and they think that that kid Trout, that he's missing too, and that a couple others, Asa, who, you know, regular here, you haven't seen her around, have you? Now you think about it, that, that troublemaker's not been here either. Ever? Yeah. I've, I've been a bit too busy for all this stuff. Are you starting up with these daft rumors as well? Well, think about it. They they have a list of like six or seven people who have gone missing. And even for grievings, that's it's a little weird to have them go completely missing. So I think I think maybe that um, Ari and Asa, um, you know, Asa is more upfront. Obviously, you know, she's a prostitute, and uh, Ari's tries to act like he's more than that because he's, yep. a, you know, I'm I'm sure I sleep with people, but because you know we really appreciate each other and kind of some kind of foppish nonsense that he tells himself. But when they're both kind of unemployed, they um, they may hang out at night in the cold weather and kind of give each other a freebie. Um, perhaps so uh so he's missed asa a little bit asa a little bit um and he kind of perks up at her name and said oh i i i figured i figured he i figured she was just she 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 had found a customer but uh maybe a maybe a repeat but i haven't seen her either you think she's missing well the there's there's a concern uh a Sergeant Elise with the brown cloaks thinks that there are a number of people missing and they think that. Uh, nope, we lost them. <laughs> it, was, it was really good too. He had something yeah. going. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give him a sec. No, uh, Father well, Gregory. Oh, sorry, Arlen, you back? I think so. Okay, I'm cool. So you. We, we lost you for a moment there. Oh, sorry. Um, it sounded good too. Just give us the last bit again. Yeah, no, they <laughs> they think that Father. Um, all I can think is, what's his name, Father Gregory? They think that Father Gregory is is the most recent victim. He's gone. He he like picked up and left or was taken because he didn't even leave any instructions for the 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 mystic who sits outside who's been turning people away. Since when does a brown cloaks pay attention? This must be serious. I, 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 I this is very, I, this, th 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 this strikes me as unusual. Yeah, they never care about anybody in grievings. Hmm. Mm. No coin in that. Right. Father Gregory, too. Mind you, old Pete's gone and all. Mm hmm. She said one of the names, uh, a veteran named Peter. Hmm. Yeah, it's 
not like he could get about by himself anyway. <laughs> That's true. So, I, I, I would say it maybe has something to do with his bar, but Father Gregory's never here, so it can't be that. Father Gregory's here the odd time, usually kind of talking, kind of counseling people against drinking too much, but he was mm. never very pushy with it. <clears throat> what do you think? Where should we look? Should we look somewhere? Should we do something? Well, maybe we go... I was able to sort of push past the the mystic that was watching Father Gregory's place. Maybe we go see if, if she has any information about... Because, you know, I asked her and she didn't say anything, but you never know. Maybe she's found a note by now or will let us search the place. Well, I, 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 I know I have nothing to do. Maybe we can do that. I'm free. I'm free right now. <laughs> nice. you? Never mind. <laughs> Aren't you always free? That's great. Ari uh, gives a cross look. Yeah. Who's that? Uh, Ebert, what are you thinking? Well, I'm supposed to be starting my shift. I'll... It would have to be the well, next I'll do day it. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that big line outside to get into the fallen soldier <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm Got... supposed to be delivering ale <laughs> oh, that's right. yeah, I could spend an hour if it helps okay alright so then what um, I think we'll end on guys is with you guys having uh, the evening in uh, the uh, fallen soldier um, what is Jewel? Well, uh, so you guys are, are kind of having, you know, uh, Ari and uh, Alby are talking about what, to, you know, what what plan to kind of follow um, when you um, uh, for for tomorrow um, and, or for the the following day. Uh, Ebert, you're you know starting to work the the room as well too. Let's end with Jewel. What is Jewel doing for the rest of the day? I think she's. Um... Oh. Like exam, like hunting around in the, in the shop or in the church, trying to find any evidence of what could have happened to Father Gregory. Okay. Maybe asking around too with some of the people she knows in the courtyard. Basically, starting her own little investigation. Okay. So uh, let's just. I'll let you give us. Uh, I, I'm assuming that she's. You know, taking a, or doing a very thorough and careful search of this, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, let me just check one thing here. I think that's a scrutinize uh, check then, and I'll give you plus 20 because you're taking basically the whole day to try to pair, tear everything apart here. Let's see. Yeah, go ahead and give us a scrutinize check. Oh, no, no, hold on. That's uh, scrutinize is. Uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Like, um, insight. I was just reading through the skill actually does. Awareness. Awareness plus uh, 20. Okay. So having searched through this, um, uh, you know, you search the, the small shrine top to bottom and you can't find anything within there. Uh, there's no, at least nothing out of order, right? There's the offering that uh, Albi has... has uh, provided, but uh, that's really it. Um, the next uh, is, I guess, the uh, is Father Gregory's quarters. And in Father Gregory's quarters, what you're able to find is in the desk, in amongst his other papers. And this one strikes out as strange to you because there's obviously no part of the Church of the New God that would reference this. There is a sketch that bears an image of a mm. horned skull. Oh. Okay, I take it. Okay. And we will end our session, our first session of Zweihander there. Now, guys, what the game recommends uh, is that at the end of each four to six hour session that you get a hundred reward points. And reward points are just like XP. Uh, you can spend it to get the thing. We only ended up being able to play for about an hour. But what first session doesn't deserve a big reward? Mm. 
So guys, <laughs> you're going to get 100 reward points. Um, you can choose it to spend it between sessions, or you can just sit on them and wait till the end of the adventure and then spend that then. But you get your first XP as well. And um, what that means is at first level, basically, you're able to pick another advancement as well. Is that your advancements cost 100 XP uh, for first tier? So and we get we got 100. You got 100. That's right. Nice. 100 rewards points. Cool. All right, guys. Well, first of all, yeah, for those who are especially for uh, James, I know you're in, in your time zone. We're getting later and later. Thank you very much for sticking around no, for the extra right. half hour. Um, for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for uh, our character creation and uh, kickoff for uh, a Zweihander uh, adventure. Um, guys, what are your uh, I'll, I'll um, share. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait till we actually pull play the full kind of game to share my thoughts on it. But do you have any initial thoughts on making your characters in Zweihander and taking them out for a spin? Mm -hmm. I like the. Um, I, I mean, I enjoy the lowbrow. Um, you know, that's just I, I typically enjoy lowbrow, and so this is definitely lowbrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's thoroughly lowbrow. Yeah. And uh, you know, like my guys, just there's just really no. There's really no redeeming value to my guy. I mean, it's, it's hard to find. So, uh, so uh, it's fun, and I'm looking forward to uh, you know getting taking him out for a second spin. Yeah. What the rest of you guys? What are you thinking so far? Yeah, I quite enjoyed it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. He's definitely yeah. a different character to something I'd normally play. So that's that's always good. Definitely, yeah. yeah. That's the fun of those uh, random generation systems is, is being pushed into an area where you, you meet someone who you wouldn't have otherwise selected to play, right? But yep. now, now the trouble, uh, the only trouble is you end up with somebody with a fellowship of 32 minus one, so he's down to two. He's not he's not a guy who gets out there in the discussions. So. Well, right. you, the thing is... is so forgive me on that. Uh, I think yeah. the game all forgives uh, or al allows for um, that kind of... Uh, the tone of doing stuff you're terrible at because mm -hmm. that's just awesome like I, I love in games when characters are forced to do things that they're not very good at because right. <laughs> it makes it either really entertaining or it makes you know for really remarkable successes when they, they're able to exceed at, or excel at something that otherwise they would be shit at yeah yeah yep. yeah uh, but that's great and you were role playing him terrifically too that's exactly the crotchety old you know big guy um yeah, Arlen, what about you? You were uh, you've been No, it's uh it's cool. I liked the random generation nature and then there's a lot of I like that there's a, a good blend of random generation mechanical and random generation flavor, like the whole doomings thing. That's mm -hmm. that's super cool. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. kind of a neat flavor addition. Definitely. Yeah. For sure. Cool. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, getting back to these characters. It's been, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I, I really yeah. enjoyed the, seeing these come together. So, for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for, uh, and, and for those in um, uh, chat who are helping us throughout the character creation session too, thank you so much, guys. Um, it, as always, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the session, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below, and we will endeavor to reply in a timely fashion. Um, in addition, if I screwed anything up in the rules, which is likely, uh, please don't hesitate to leave uh, instructions so that people who are watching the video, uh, if, if they don't, you know, they can benefit from the mistakes that I made. I, if I can't be a role model, I'm happy to serve as a cautionary tale. Um, in addition, uh, you may note that there is in the description of this video uh, a link to, uh, well, first off, uh, if you uh, don't want to leave a comment in the in the, uh, vi sec the comment section of the video, you can also reach me on Twitter. My Twitter is at uh, Dungeon Musings. Uh, you can also shoot me an email. My email address is DungeonMusings at gmail.com. Uh, you can also um, join us on the Dungeon Musings Discord server. It's in the there's a link in the description of this video that'll take you there. We have uh, channels dedicated to all the different games that we uh, we run on the channel, as well as other things like there's a, a very cool uh, play by post um, Mutants and Masterminds game that has just kicked off on there. Uh, we have a Find a Game channel as well if you're looking for other folks to play in your game or looking for a game to play in. Um, as well as just a bunch of general discussion uh, stuff on there. So it's, um, yeah, it's a cool place to, to touch base with any of us uh, or uh, me or any other of the folks who play on the channel uh, or watch the channel. 
Um, in addition, there is a link in the description of the video to something called Heroes Save Villages. That is the charity fundraising campaign that we run on the channel. And from now until January, sorry, noon on January 1st, 2020, we are running another raffle. And the grand prize for the raffle is a brand new copy of the Platinum Edition Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus box set created by Beetle and Grimm. Uh, Beetle and Grimm have very generously donated this thing, but if you were to buy it, it would be $500 US for this sucker. It is an enormous beautiful product full of tons of cool stuff for use in a uh, 5e D&D game has the full descent into avernus adventure plus a ton of handouts a ton of uh, of uh, ep uh, extra uh, encounters maps miniatures of stuffed flump um, all sorts of cool stuff and um, the way that you can uh, enter to win that is by uh, making a donation to the hero save villages uh, charity through the uh, tickets. The raffle tickets are $25 Canadian, which works out to about 18 bucks American. Uh, each prize or each uh, uh, donation gives you an op uh, opportunity to win the box set. And if not the box set, then you will uh, also um, have a chance of winning a copy of the Pathfinder, uh, core, sorry, Pathfinder 2nd Edition Core Rulebook, which I've donated, Pathfinder 2nd Edition Bestiary, also I donated, or a copy of the um, Starfinder character operations manual that just came out as well. Um, I donated all of those and because Beetle and Grimm was so generous to donate the Descendant of Avernus Platinum Edition, I'll pay for the shipping. So you don't need to pay for that either. All you need to do is make a donation to Hero Save Villages uh, through one of those raffles. All money donated to Hero Save Villages goes to the SOS Children's Villages International Charity, which is a really or terrific organization that benefits over 80,000 orphan and abandoned children from around the world. Um, and it's active in over 130 countries. So any money donated goes to help SOS Children's Villages International help those kids. Uh, you can learn all about SOS Children's Villages International by following that link. You can hear about the amazing villages they set up to support these kids. Um, and then you can make a decision as to whether you want to make a donation, either just for uh, the sake of making a donation or to get an opportunity to win one of those very, very cool gaming prizes. Last but not least, I want to thank my stalwart heroes, my grim and perilous players. So Jeff and Sean and James and Arlen, thank you so much for joining me on uh, Sunday to take Zweihander out for a spin. I had a lot of fun with this. I am really looking forward to... Uh, I've been anticipating this one for quite some time too, so I I'm excited that we finally got a chance to make uh, to roll up these characters. I look forward to um, our next session in this. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. Thanks for running it. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, then, man. until next time, folks, for those listening at home, thank you again for uh, joining us for this uh, uh, initial foray into uh, Zweihander's Grim and Perilous World. We look forward to seeing you again next time, and until then... Happy gaming.